hiking in the state parks. There's bird watching. There's trout stream fishing action. There's scouting for that spring wild turkey hunting trip. And there's looking for shed deer antlers in your favorite woods. So there's no reason to be a couch potato, is there? No. Get outdoors and enjoy. Well, it's time. Time to get all your new permits and stamps for hunting, fishing, fur harvesting, and state parks. Time to check your motorboat registration for renewal. Time to make those cabin and camping reservations in the state parks if you haven't done that already. And time to go over all of your outdoor gear for spring and summer. Get more information on Nebraska's outdoor scene by going to the Game and Parks website, OutdoorNebraska.gov. And that'll wrap it up. I'm Greg Wagner with Nebraska Game and Parks. The backseat. Check the backseat. All right, come here. Check the backseat. Gets in your head, right? Good. Because every year, dozens of children are forgotten in the backseat of a car by a parent or caregiver. All never thought it could happen to them. But with changes in routines, distractions, or a sleeping child, it can happen to anyone. Parked cars get hot fast and can be deadly. So get it in your head. Check the backseat. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZ and Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. A crossover is... Crossover dribble. Same for the crossover. Kyrie Irving dips over in the lane. One of the most famous crossovers of all time. Behind the back, an ankle breaker on Chris Paul. Crossover. 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 Crossover continues to evolve. All right, time for the crossover. It's brought to you by Every Little Concrete Affair in Omaha at EverLittleConcrete.com. Uh, I'm waiting, Josh. Big, big announcement coming up big right now. Shoes. Huge announcement. It's oh, going to change your mood. We love big announcements. Yeah. Big shoes. Special you. Big, big on shoes. This. What's I, happening? What's going on? Like, if you had to rank. The most favorite people in Josh's life, JJ Watt, is number one, yep. right? Uh huh. Okay, he's already Bryce re- Harper. He's already oh. retired. Bryce Harper's still playing. The mayor, Gene Stothard, is about to announce if she's going to run for re-election is, as the mayor she? of Omaha. Is she? We don't know. No, uh, I noticed you said mayor of Omaha. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, what, when are you announcing Where, your candidacy? Yeah. I announced my candidacy a long time ago. Write me in, Josh Odson. I live here. You ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I don't pull up in the family truckster and offer people rib tips. <laughs> well, oh, we're... good. See what I did there? Yeah, I did. It's a vacation reference. Yes, <laughs> indeed. And what city was that in? That was uh, East, East St. Louis, Louis, I believe. Yeah, if you want to get the technical. arch, and it goes all the way to the top. Yeah, <laughs> all the way to the top. <laughs> you, uh, it's the old man, the old, the Miss- old Mississippi, the old, the old man. man. You think, uh, <laughs> think she'll be there for Cardinal opening day against the uh, Dodgers? <laughs> well, I mean, the she's one of the dignitaries. They play, yeah, they play the Padres next week. Best can fans you, in the country. Can you believe opening day is in the like, forty-eight hours? Yeah, I, it's, yeah. it's very so excited. It's very odd to me. Yeah. Well, so snuck up. I've already done the big fantasy draft. I've uh, Who'd you get? watched all the Cubs previews. Um, and they then make the playoffs this year. Yes. Okay. And then I today like hits home when T-Mobile says it's free MLB TV day. Yep. So yep. it's it's getting closer. It's getting closer. And by the way, your team, which I really really like, you know that is. I now think they're an automatic pick to win the Central okay. after the decision yesterday. All right, enough, enough. They got rid of the Pepsi Porch. Uh, yeah, Coke is back. Yeah, Coke yeah. is back. Oh, Coke okay. is back at Coffee I might go to now. more games in Kansas oh, wow. City this year because I can drink Diet Coke. But no one's going to get Mountain Dew there now. It, the that is correct. How, how's someone supposed to get their Mountain Dew? Ban Mountain Dew. Uh, favorite memories of the Pepsi Porch? Uh, I sat there for a couple important games once upon a time, I think. Uh a lot of lot of times where uh, I'd try to get down there and they'd say no, you have to have a ticket. But there was nobody down there, you know. Games in April and they things like on. that. Love the come Pepsi on. porch. So I wonder what they'll rebrand it to. I don't think it'll be the Coke oh. porch, but we'll see. You watch that was this? George Brett's dug. You watch this former <laughs> Governor Dave Heineman is at uh, <laughs> Mayor Gene Stothard's announcement. Are you watching this? Should we take this? She doesn't have to do this. She knows this, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I held it off as long as I could. <laughs> <laughs> she can just go and like do whatever she wants at this point. I don't even think she's that bad of a mayor. She just doesn't live here. 
I don't know, big, big, big sports events in this town would beg to differ. Josh. Take that new husband of yours and gallivant across this beautiful Gosh, country of wow. ours. Very personal. What? Very personal. I'm happy she found love. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 See, we all agree. We're all, all right. happy. Back to back to the Royals bringing in. Yeah, let's talk about the Royals yeah. doing coke. Stick to sports. So wait, wait. would you? Would you? Okay. Uh, I mean, the Bobby Witt contract was big but i think coke in the k is bigger discuss Hold amongst question. yourselves uh by the way i'm being told that the uh that the pepsi porch will be rebranded to the qt fountain deck oh, oh match that the, makes sense yeah. Yeah. The the add on the uh, uniforms and the uh, ad and then yeah. uh, in that hey, it really will puts you be able to, on the on the the, fountains? the qt fountain deck Will you be able to get the special QT ice? I would hope so. And a little roller grill, maybe an egg roll. Yeah. the cr- Oh, yeah. Some chicken roll-ups. Oh, are they going to uh, have like hot a... Hot dogs. Like a, Don't they have the breakfast ones too? Or like a shooter, like a cannon, like a egg oh, roll they cannon? Should. They should. Egg yeah. roll cannon. And, and roll then cannon. they need to have the person that, you know, checks you out. They, be, they have to have multiple screens where wherever you go to a QT... That person behind the counter that also is raised, like yeah. they're never yeah. at the uh, eye level; yeah. they're mm-hmm. above you. They're better, but they're than always you. pushing. They they can like wait on three customers at once. That's yes. true. Yeah, that's, that's a beautiful the only, thing. Great point, Gary. That is the only convenience store in America that encourages their employees. Yes, go quickly. I feel as if they can. I feel as if I can walk up to any place at the counter at QT and just get my stuff paid for. Yep. Yes, it's yeah. it's a, it's really a comforting feeling. So shout out to QT and the QT Fountain Porch. Which is uh, will be debuted this year. Uh, I did notice uh, a exciting. couple of weeks ago that you can go on TikTok and order the ice maker that QT uses for their little cubed oh, ice. Oh, that's hello. interesting. Um, that's a game changer. This just came across from sorry to ping pong all over the place here uh, from the desk of Adam Schefter. Hmm. NFL planning to play another game this year on Christmas Day, Wednesday Christmas Day football game yep. coming. The takeover yep. is yep. has arrived. So we just need to tackle Tuesdays and Thursdays. I bet the NFL or Friday. The, I, just wait until the NFL finds out they they get the news that college football is adding another you know week to their playoff, and they get triggered at them and blow them out of the water. Yeah, this is it's like all right. It's t- time to start Saturday games earlier in the cool. schedule. Uh-huh. This schedule is going to be incredibly backloaded, isn't it? Because uh-huh. they're going to try and blast the college football playoff out of the water. Yep. Mm. Not playing nice. I have a. Uh... Oh, Josh. Uh, no? She is going to run for a city record fourth term. Yay. I told you before we went on the air. You know, it's a tease. It's a four terms. Nobody does four. What's up? Uh, be mayor for 24 years. How long was, uh, how long was Mayor Fahey the mayor? Three. Three terms? Three terms. What yeah. about Hal Dobb? Uh, Wasn't he a short timer? Uh, yeah. He what ran about, for so many things. Um, <laughs> what about okay, PJ? So, yeah, PJ Morgan was there for a bit. Yeah. What was the one guy that before Mayor Gene? Jim Suttle. Yeah, yep, he kind of. Jim, yep. Jim Suttle was a one termer. Yeah. yeah, he was. Kind of got was, moved out pretty mm-hmm. quick by he the decision suddenly, makers he was, in he was, town. It was a, it was a subtle term, really. So okay, hold on. I'm looking <laughs> back at our mayor's histories. Um, so this will be our longest. This is now officially, um, our longest tenured mayor. Since, uh, actually, it seems like ever, ever, yeah, yeah. So, record fourth term, yeah, that she will seek as long as she doesn't go up against a candidate that is proposing the Green Bay Packers move to Omaha. <laughs> <laughs> Might have a shout, okay? I forgot about that. Uh, she's, I mean, she's so strong of a candidate. You guys she laugh at that guy last work. time. <laughs> hey, I don't know. What was that? That guy was like 25. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He had a lot of conviction. Oh, he did. The Packers <laughs> could move to Omaha and oh, the dome. He, yep. Oh, he loved it. He thought it was it was I mean, he was before his time before Red Hates proposed uh, an NHL team yeah. being here. It's yeah. amazing. We've never had a mayor for more than 10 years before. Like a, th- this is it's actually kind of crazy. Do you look at some of these other cities across the country? They have mayors for decades and decades and decades. Yeah. Hmm. So we, we tend to get tired of our mayors, apparently. Frank E. Moore's. Uh, who is oh, who took office in 1897? Uh, he died in office in 1906. Oh, sad. Um, well, he doesn't, but there's a the last time Creighton and Tennessee played in basketball. There's a note here that says he may have actually served his term illegally. Whoa, <laughs> oh, wow. whoa, Nebraska. Sup- 
He lived Nebraska, in Council Bluffs. Nebraska Supreme Court holds his election <laughs> illegal on the grounds that he is a defaulter. A what? Wow. Oh. So he wasn't there on January 6th? He was a defaulter <laughs> as collector and custodian of public funds at that time. Wow. So, so uh, an entire an entire tenure in office up in smoke. It's crazy. Oh, a man. lot of mayors in Omaha get things named after them. Yeah. It's true. I mean, we got to have Johnny the... Rosenblatt, yep. Eugene Leahy, Edward Zarinsky. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mike Fahey's got a street named after sure got a street. What's well, going to be named after Gene Stother? The I st- got it. The streetcar. How about a terminal at the airport? Oh, oh, oh. that's definitely happening. The Stother terminal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I think. Um, actually, sorry, you want to go over the? No, I brought that up in real here. time. Okay. That was not me setting you guys. You up. You got to so, take the streetcar uh, over there. So I think they'll probably rename Farnham. It'll be <laughs> Stothard <laughs> because that's where the streetcar will be. Yeah. Streetcar. Stothard Street. There'll uh-huh. be signs in people's yards on 52nd Street. Both ways on Stothert all the time. Make Stothert both ways. <laughs> and then somebody will go, uh, guys, we didn't think this sign up very well, did we? <laughs> all right. Big news in Omaha. Huge. It is. Huge. I can't wait for you just to go off on your podcast. You're talking about Roadhouse and Jake Gyllenhaal. And the next thing... Gene Stothard is involved in a discussion. If we're not careful, Omaha could turn into whatever post-apocalyptic Miami that that was in Roadhouse. Now, why did... Hey, yeah, uh, so uh, tell me about this. Is it worth a watch? Better than I thought. Okay. Does not need to exist. <laughs> um, it's kind of weird, like a, like a really dry sense of humor. Okay. All right. Like he's... Gyllenhaal's throwing out one-liners while yeah. he's beating the crap out of people. Okay. Awesome. Do they make a reference to be nice? No. No? It sounds Very, like Josh's kind of movie, wow. honestly. Very few references to the original. Okay. Really? That's good, though, in a way, okay. because all respect to Patrick Swayze, then. Is his name Dalton? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's I'd... not like his son, is it? No. Oh, no. yeah. That would have no. been bad. Yeah. Right. He and Kelly Lynch had a, had a baby. Um, Ezra Millard was a mayor. Of, yeah, he he got stuff named after. He got him, a right? town named after. Entire yeah. wow. town. Yeah, named he, after my him. hometown is named after him. Uh, also, Ezra hometown Middle School, it. right? Yep, there is a middle school. Th- why'd they call it his first name? Interesting. You don't see that very often. They'd be yeah. like Connor Middle School. Well, I went to John G. Nyhart. John G. Nyhart. Yeah. I went to As Catholics uh, kept it simple. St. Pius the tenth. Sterling J. Yeah. Morton. I yeah, think. Yeah. Right. yeah, Sterling J. Morton. Sterling go J. Panthers. Morton. Yep. Yep. Go Panthers. Panther Pride. You know what? That's one thing that we Knights. need. All these middle schools that are being opened in elementary schools, we gotta we gotta have nicknames. Like every school needs a nickname. Yeah. Like you. you have to have a mascot yeah. and uh, a nickname. Uh Anderson Wolverines, uh Kiewit Colts, Miller North Junior High. Look at this. Mustangs. Whoa. Um Russell, These are all the Millard Middle School. Russell Middle School. Millard boy. Oh, I'm trying. Oh, I've drawn a blank on them. So is, yeah, so is West Side Middle still the Warriors? I think so, yeah. I would right. assume so. Yeah. Can, uh, Josh, were, can you rip off some of the OPS middle schools? Uh, I believe uh, Be- Bellevue's was the Junior Bruins, maybe? No. The Bruins? Buffett Bobcats? Beverage. Bu- Beverage Bulldogs, because it's Burke? Yeah, they're bo- uh, Yeah, did you go to Beverage? No, I went, uh, to he went to Morton. Oh, you went to Morton. Okay. He's Morton. Morton Panther all day. What about uh, what's King Science Center? What's uh, like they're a tiger of some kind. <laughs> <laughs> what's Mars? Mars Can- candy bars. Mar- Mars Mars <laughs> Mars Middle School candy bars. Because we're opening a lot of middle schools and elementary yeah. schools and junior highs, and I think they all need nicknames. Well, I'm wondering when the trend of like how you know, how we do minor league baseball teams now. I wonder when that comes to middle schools. Ooh, that might oh. be a ways. If what? you look at some of the very uh, PC-friendly nicknames that are at the new high schools like in Lincoln. King is the Wildcats, by the way. Very good, Josh. Very good. Uh, Lewis and Clark Trailblazers. Nice. And that's appropriate. Of course. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Did you find Russell uh, Middle School yet? I yeah. think it's some type of a wolf. Well, it's got to be because it's right over there next to Millard West, by, right? By the Wildcats. Or the Wildcat. Yeah. Wolf, it's wolf right cats. next to it. But so I'm wondering when they I'm the wonder, I'm okay. wondering when they start calling middle schools like the you know the yellow ducks or something like that or like Kenosha the, kickers. 
the milk the daddies. grasshoppers, yeah, <laughs> the bay bears, the whooping cranes. And all of a sudden, for people... one class B game this year will be the. That's funny. Yes, theme night. Oh, theme night that. at uh, at class B football games. That is, a, I love that idea. We'll be the Bennington something else. I don't know. The Bennington Barons. Maybe the uh, the Bennington Thrashers. <laughs> yeah. How about the Bennington Bonds? The... Since you didn't pass a bond out there. Oh. Uh... Nice guys, I become a Bennington resident on Thursday. Whoa, yeah, on Thursday, big day, Thursday, yeah. opening day for you and baseball. <laughs> yeah, baseball. And then I'm gonna have I'm gonna have yard signs that talk about passing a bond. Hey, uh, Norris is the Redbirds. Brian is saying on the on the text line. Okay, Norris Redbirds. I was the Bruins. St. Pius the tenth Bruins. Saint, nice. St. Pius the tenth Bruins. We're the Anderson Middle School Wolverines. Yep, black and red. We were pretty tough. We were black and red also. Were you? Red and black. But I also went for one year at a high school that the nickname is the Maroons. Oh, that's cool. Dowling High Maroons. Oh, Dowling. I knew some people from Dowling. They, the Dowling people were always so s- smug. Uh, they're so, I think? They, yeah, they're so happy that they're from. I went to West Well, now they've Dowling. renamed it. So it was just West Moines Dowling. I, I went, went to Dowling Catholic. Year. Yeah, now they've yeah. they emphasized Dowling Catholic. Dowling Catholic. Yeah. The Maroons. A- is that a mascot we need to change? Well, then we didn't have a mascot. It okay. was just the maroons. It was a color. It just, was a, just the it was color. A shield. That's like okay. the like the logo okay. is the sh- the. I don't know. I, I probably learned it, but I didn't pay attention my freshman year in high school. It's who, like who a, a shield, a Catholic shield. Okay, so this is not an indigenous no reference of any no, kind. and okay. their colors are maroon and white. Sure, that mm. should be a question for Caitlin Clark, who went there. Caitlin Clark went to yeah. Dowling. Yeah. Should be Dallin Catholic, it, right? Is which is the same school. They just oh they they no, wanted to oh, be a little okay. bit uppity. I follow, I follow to that. continue on with the point, Caitlin Clark may be a little smug. Maybe a little smug. And yeah, when people go, Do you think this is just an Iowa with you know University of Iowa thing? I'm like, no, she went to Dowling. Yelling at people, <laughs> anyone who, who she can find to shut the bleep up. Yep. I mean, yeah, that's that's Dowling all the way. I think she'll do that in the WNBA. Yes. Do you think she'll yeah. still have the same act in the WNBA? Uh-huh. Yes. You can't turn that off. I don't right? think there's going to be one herself. night where she could say, welcome to pro yeah. basketball. Yeah. Right? yeah. Someone's going to just check. I'll tell you what happens when she gets to WNBA. She's not going to get every single call. No. Yeah. No. She'll get checked. She's she's going to get an elbow. Mm-hmm. When she pushes off, they'll be like, ah, that's actually a foul at our level. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to actually call that. I'm ready for the. Uh, Might have to adjust your game. Sicilian Stiletto says uh, we're ready for the beverage trash pandas in the. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I have a trash panda a bobblehead. There you go. Yeah, the Ezra Utter Tuggers. Yeah. Good, good friend, <laughs> former uh, Omaha Storm Chaser marketing director Rob Sternberg worked for the trash pandas, or maybe still does. Actually, I think he does still work for the he's trash a, pandas. He's a trash panda. Yeah, yeah. He got uh, oh, he's one- a trash panda. Once you're a trash panda, you're a trash yeah, panda for trash life. Trash panda yeah. for life. Yeah, that, that that doesn't leave you. Once you go trash Part of the panda, family. you never go back. <laughs> yeah, we do need to expand with nicknames instead of like the tigers and the lions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it'll eventually Absolutely. make its way to middle schools. Yep. Like, uh, you know, Benson is renowned across the country for being the bunnies. I know. The running rabbits. The running rabbits. That's right. For basketball. Hey, I will at least give us credit for that. Like our high schools, there are some that are out of the box. They fit the community, like the Packers. Mm-hmm. It's mostly like, yeah, like in, Omaha South Packers yeah. makes sense. It's yeah. mostly in the small towns in the state, yes. though. Like there are some super unique ones, which I think is really cool. I don't know why Columbus was the discoverers. Why did they go with like the the Cougars? Probably, you know, I, I, probably I, has just, a reference I, to Columbus, I, I, I guess. I, I, <laughs> like uh, what's I, uh, uh, Gothenburg, the Swedes? Yes. Yeah. Like hell isn't yeah, the, that's it, great. Isn't somebody the pilots? Uh, somebody else who's the uh, there's got to be an aviator well, out yeah, there. The, uh, whippets. Whippets. Oh, yeah, the, the, whippets. Minden, the Minden Whippets, the Minden Whippets, yeah. You have the uh, midges, or is it like the midgets or the midges? They used to be the midgets, yeah, I and then I they, think they uh, changed it. They were going to cancel, they changed to the midges, yeah. like the yeah. little bug that comes off of Lake Erie <laughs> when Jabba Chamberlain yeah, was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. was, was yeah. that when we had a democratic governor <laughs> <laughs> in uh. One of the great schools I went to was the Pacat Pintos. Oh, Pacat. The yeah, I don't Pintos. think I could go to a school that your nickname was the Pintos. It wasn't great. The <laughs> school was great, but the mascot, I was like, eh. I don't think I could be playing. Did they like, drive around hey, like a beat up Pinto? Hey, or was put it your hands together. Here come oh, the Pintos. 
I'd yeah, be like, there's not my, a lot of elementary school that's pride what my out mom there. Used to no. drive. Yeah, we, we need more elementary yeah. school pride. The Pintos right. were famous I, for if you touched it, it blew up. I didn't walk around <laughs> the other elementary schools in town saying, "Yeah, that's right, I'm a prairie wind stallion." <laughs> Oh, I was a, I was a pretty. I, I, I instead you saved it for. Uh, I didn't later. have a. I didn't have a Hitler very wide hoodie. I was hey, a proud uh, Nyhart Knight slash uh, Norse Lion. <laughs> I think my first year of of preschool, I was a Norse Lion. Then we moved to the Nyhart area, and I was a Nyhart Knight. Where were you? The Prairie what? Prairie Wind Stallions. Prairie. See, that would be a line you'd use like when you get to be of age and you're in a bar. I'm a Prairie Wind Stallion. I'm a Prairie Wind Stallion. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of okay. Sup? There's some connotation there. What do you uh, What do you think that means? I don't know, but yeah. I want to find. You out. want to find out? <laughs> um, okay, so back to our Coke discussion. <laughs> wait, wait, wait! One more, one more on the names. Okay, so All we right. got this tweet from Tom. He says, "I was on the naming committee as a member of the first graduating class at Anderson Middle School." Yep. Another guy and I were Michigan fans at the time, and uh, other kids thought Wolverines was a pretty cool mascot. Yeah. I now regret this. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> as a as a Husker fan, oh, naming okay. being responsible partly responsible for naming an entire school after a Wolverine. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And I was I'm an. They alum. gave the kids that power. That's I incredible. Not, I did not know that. Uh, I did not know that. Well, okay, so isn't I. Th- I think this is true. Didn't they allow the incoming freshman at Papio South to come up with the nickname? That sounds familiar, I, but it's amazing if they do. I mean, hilarious yeah. if they do. The people who have imagine? the least amount of experience in high school Holy to, to <laughs> yeah. dictate. <laughs> yes. yeah. Could you imagine get, telling telling that to everybody else like 30 years down the line? You see that school, you see other name is like the Tigers. Like, I did that. Yeah. That's, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of cool to know that you were part of it, but it's very cool. Yeah. I think you I've could really heard, abuse that uh, power as well. I think I've heard that the first class at Papio South, uh, if you were an incoming freshman, yeah. you you were able to vote for the nickname of the high school and they came up with Titans. It's like, what do you want to graduate as? Why'd they come it up was. with Titans? I don't know. Uh, was because, Remember the Titans? Because Remember the Titans was popular it was. at it, that time. It actually was. Yeah. Ha! I don't, don't know, know what the other that didn't age well. the other options yeah. were back in what? Two, what was Papio South? I don't know, 2001? Yeah, probably yeah, right yeah, around it there. Was right, yeah. That was right around the time that the Millard South Indians changed to the Patriots. Was 2000 or 2001? What do we think? Um, what do we think the selection process behind the Elkhorn South Storm was? Uh, was storm cha- was storm chasing all the rage? I m- I might have been yeah. a lot of storm and storm yeah, chasing uh, around that time. Yeah, it was real yeah, popular. So you had the antlers, you got the storm, and you got the wolves. Now the wolves. Mm-hmm. The wolves. Yeah. That's a hard one. I don't know yeah, the about wolves. the wolves. Yeah, yeah. So, they have a cool color scheme. Yeah, I, I like, like I like their setup over yeah. there. Um, so back to Millard South. I know I was still living here when they made the transition from yeah. Indians to Patriots. Yeah. Uh, first high school football game we were doing Millard South. I slipped up and it's called them the Millard South Indians. The Indians. Okay. Oh, yes. I I know of a former activities director that probably would have got all over your butt for that one mm, too. Mm, 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 mm. Mm-hmm. Does he get over? Does he get all over uh, Bellevue East that they're still the Chieftains? Uh, she is retired. That I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, all right. So when Troy Dannon speaks today. Oh, yeah. People ask questions. Troy Dan. I've already, I told Nick that, you know, I mean, he's going to be nice about Trev, but he needs to really fight Trev. So the appropriate thing would be, you know, like they, when a coach is announced, they give him a jersey. What about the AD? He puts on the skinny N hat yeah. that has been banned yes. in Nebraska. Oh. It's no longer the big blocking. There's a hype video that gets released right at that time. Yeah. And it says, you wanted it. We listened. Yeah. The skinny N is back. Yeah. On the baseball, hat. and then the fans realize that their voice once again is being heard. Yes, mm-hmm. we, someone's actually listening. And, and, you the, see, at, and, and the it's seller? a great question, actually. What is Troy Dannon's first act as the athletic director? I mean, we've seen a lot yeah. of these opening salvos being fired before. That's true from, from various athletic directors see, or people in power. I, I think putting on the skinny end hat and then <laughs> asking everybody to come celebrate with a beer on April fifteenth at Haymarket Park. When Nebraska plays, Creighton. oh my mm, gosh, sure. the popularity would go through the roof. Beer for the first time at Haymarket Park. Yep. Now, now that might more, be re- met with some resistance. We're opening the taps. We know that the other media members listen to this show, and I want to get a message to them. First question out of the gate <laughs> needs to be Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's kind of mean. <laughs> So you didn't know who he was last week. Nobody no, knows true. who anybody is. Nobody knows who anybody now, is. Now, 
Uh, Joel says uh, we're going to revert uh, Herbie Husker. I'm not sure. Would they, that, would that be met with universal praise? I don't got think rid so. Of the current Herbie Husker. I think we kind of like. Uh, I know Gary be a fan. I would donate money. Yeah, Gary'd be a big, but a we have booster of nil. We oh. have to find something that would be met with universal praise. Uh, well, the big one would be Coke. announcing Coke. Yeah, but that's that's more of a process there. Yeah, just say, hey, you know it's what? Contracts. We're breaking away from the academic side, and <laughs> in all athletic facilities, you will be able to get Coke. Or they go to Nike. They're like, actually, oh, oh. we're we're going to be a Nike school. Oh, now. what if he ooh. stood up and he took He's off like his a Nike blazer preserver. and he was wearing like a Nike hoodie? It says just he, do it with an N. And then he just oh. bow nose. <laughs> and then he, then he slipped on the skinny N hat. Uh, that would be met with, I think, wow. universal praise. Uh huh. This would be certainly as close as you could get. Yeah. This would be like an earth shattering day of what we thought originally. It'd just be kind of a oh, yeah. Like what was Trev's just first going through act? the motions here? Let me start taking Formality. shots at other Big Ten schools, just randomly Iowa. And there's a reason why I wanted to go to UNI instead of Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> or he incorporated um, lines that Sean Eichhorst or Steve Peterson have used. Oh, good one. I do plan on restoring the order here. Yeah. Well, we had to evaluate where Iowa was. Or if he goes gravitate to mediocrity, goes, we're gonna we're gonna look into that whole that that Black Friday thing you guys do, and then as the room goes silent, he goes psych. <laughs> we're gonna double down. <laughs> we're actually gonna play twice on Black Friday. Lifetime contract. <laughs> we're gonna play Iowa and Wisconsin. You oh, have to do oh. something to rally people. People get fired up for that. And, and you know A what? Football o- doubleheader. Oklahoma too. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Oklahoma, Colorado, Oklahoma's back on the schedule, and Iowa. They're all gonna we're gonna play it yep. around robin on Black Friday, and okay. our spring game will be on Fox, which is apparently a thing people care about. <laughs> spring game's gonna be on Fox, Michigan, and Ohio State. Yeah, back to back Saturdays. Yeah. That's so weird. We need to get a grip. Hi, we're Fox. We got nothing else. <laughs> yep. Yeah, could we air baseball? Yeah, we could, but well, we won't. Just do a NASCAR race or something. Move it to Saturday. <laughs> It's, it's all right, Fox. You don't have to. You don't have to do any everything all the time. And you could transition to ice dancing to the hits of Motown. They're gonna have Gus. <laughs> they're gonna have Gus do the spring game. Oh, ooh, uh, no definitely. way, right? Definitely. Oh yeah. Yes. Oh, him yeah, and Joe Clapp. Him, and, him yeah. and Joe Clapp. Oh, yeah. it'd be amazing. Can you see him getting fired up over a that third cannot, stringer? That cannot sit well with them. <laughs> It'll be exciting to watch Michigan spring game for their uh, seven win team this year. Ooh, wow. probably right. They had That's a bold. Uh, significant injury yesterday. Yeah. They did. Yeah. They did. Or uh, Troy Dannon sits down today and, he, and one of the things he says, I just want to remind people that football practice has started. <laughs> yeah. Did you I hear about uh, Dylan? <laughs> did, did he you? was slinging it for NFL scouts last week. He sure he, was. He's already had a pro day. Dylan. Played college snap yet? Did you hear about Dylan? I saw, I saw him throwing uh, footballs in a video that they put out yesterday. Yep. Oh, he, well, kinda, he, he bears a striking resemblance to Patrick Mahomes. Oh, he's Patrick Mahomes Jr. Yeah. It's Who was the first he, quarterback that they showed in the video, though, on the rollout? It was Heinrich. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I guess I didn't look yeah, into it that came, closely. He came rolling out. I kind of just yeah. skipped by Heinrich. He threw an he threw an accurate <laughs> he threw an accurate seed. So what you're saying? On the rollout, you don't think he's in the running to get that first snap against UTEP? <laughs> I oh. hope that Heinrich is able to uh, help the team in some way, shape, or form this year. But I hope that it's not playing quarterback. That's my take. I'd that's second. my that's my first football take in months. I'd second that. <laughs> I would definitely second that. I think also uh, Minnesota game last year. He caught a pass. Do that. He did. That's mm-hmm. what we thought his role would be. His first. Re- it was the first reception of the 2024 year. Went to Heinrich Carver. Amazing. Wow. We should have known then. What a note. <laughs> Jeff Sims still without a home. Uh, we did yeah. this exercise. What? Two weeks ago. You were gone. Yeah, and he, I, and we still haven't found him. He's lost. And yep. I, he's so with Satino he Panico. graduates in May. I think he's lost. So he's probably portal. still in school. Uh, did we check if he was still uh, listed as a student? Let's see if we can get a hit what on the that roster open practice here? on Thursday. Just with Jeff Sims out there slinging the football. <laughs> <It'd> be awesome. <laughs> Never left, guys. <laughs> I would take Jeff Sims as the backup, or the you know maybe backup to the backup or whatever. I would take Jeff Sims on the roster. The assistant to the assistant regional manager. Yeah, yeah. sure, sure. <laughs> then we can allow. He's there. Uh, Mr. Uh, it's kind of helping uh, I need to do some other stuff. He's kind of helping Glenn Thomas. He's sort of like the, the player assistant coach. Yeah. All right. Here's, here's, here's assistant quarterback. Here's coach. how you catch yeah. the snap. Well, everybody likes him. Here's how you don't catch the snap. 
<laughs> okay, I think we've made the AD press conference more exciting than they usually are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Didn't they have I-Course over in the alumni? Wasn't that in the God, alumni I'm building? I remember that one. And that was so awkward because he was taken over for T.O. and they had yeah. T.O. right there next to him. Yes. When, when they fired... It was very forgetful, uh, it was a very forgetful press uh, When they fired I. Korst, it was over in a different... That was in the alumni. Okay. I, I remember that because I remember going over there that day and I'm like, where am I? That is, I still don't even know where that was. We, we have to judge the hirings at Nebraska on where their location That's true. is. Like if you are on the sixth floor, eh. If you get like the special third floor or if you're in the alumni center or if you're rural and you get the whole championship center. Yep. That's how you, that's how you determine how, how popular that hire is rural, or where you rank. Yep. Rule got the whole big indoor practice facility. Maybe they'll do the next hiring in like the weight room or something like that. It'll just say Husker power everywhere. Frost got the fourth floor. Uh, Fred got the fourth floor. Will got the sixth floor. He yes, did. He yeah. Did. Yeah, he did. Bill Moose gave him a baseball jersey. Yeah. <laughs> I remember do, that. You, do you want your old jersey we still got it <laughs> bill moose was just ripping off hires like crazy yeah. yep you know no, he was on a something, kick. you're right there is something about that fourth floor press conference when everybody anticipates the elevator opening yeah. oh yep. yeah who's gonna be on here uh, who's gonna be on? hey it's what we're here See, for that's what they, but more specifically with frost i remember it, we knew that it was going to be Frost who was going to be the next person to pop out of the elevator, but who was going to be on the elevator with yeah. him? Yes. And yeah, there's, the still, there's still pictures. I think it was um, uh, Moose must have been on there. Maybe he was there before, but I know Davison was yeah. on there. Um, it, there's there's still pictures. Because he had just maybe, come up from meeting the alums. Maybe Osborne yeah. was oh, on Oh, yeah. There. He was down in the Yes, in the weight room. See, what, area, yeah. see, okay. So you're the University of Nebraska, Lincoln, and you control your content, or at least you think you do. What? Why don't you keep this announcement quiet of who it is, and oh, then and then just do, and then just the pops out of the elevator. I love that. Okay, <laughs> reveal so meet, it. So meet us at two o'clock for the revealing, and when it gets to be two, there's like a countdown clock. Yeah, and then the elevator it hits the fourth floor and it dings, and it opens oh. up, and there's the new AD. And they put a temporary oh. question mark on the elevator. Yeah, and yeah. so when it opens up, then the question mark is revealed, and it's that. Person. And then everybody like, looks oh, at Troy like, Dan and they're like, they're like oh, who's that guy? <laughs> who is that? <laughs> You look familiar. Now, now everybody has to download a facial recognition app. <laughs> right. now, you look familiar, but help me out again. Which one is the AD? Yeah. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> it's the one that gets up and starts talking. Did we hire a female? No, that's his wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that person's awful young to be an athlete. That's the kid. Okay. I, will, I, will. I think that'd be such a good idea. It would just be the elder. It could be their tradition. They actually, they actually, they didn't try this, but it actually happened with Mike Riley. The elevator opens and people are like, oh. Oh, oh my God! Do you remember is this? Is that him, Gary? It, Nick, do you remember this picture? This picture is amazing. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> Holy hell! So what did I get myself into? <laughs> it's Frost coming up in the elevator, <laughs> and it's just like barely open, only on him. And he has this look on his face. I'll tweet the picture. He <laughs> he has this look on his face, like, <laughs> uh, whoa. <laughs> The elevator, full house here. the elevator has a Scott Frost poster in the background. <laughs> if only the elevator at Memorial Stadium could talk. Because <laughs> that's a great it'd be a, really, it'd be a really good book. Because there are a couple of like some of the most iconic shots of Nebraska athletic history <laughs> are out of that elevator. Yep. Oh, the the man. when Solich got fired. And the elevator is full of Mark Bame, and like Bernard, Bernard Thomas, Thomas <laughs> Jamal Lord, wearing yeah. a Milwaukee Brewers cap. Yep. And the look on their face as they are in the elevator. Bernard Thomas looks like he's going to fight somebody. Well, remember, yeah. Bernard Thomas asked a question. Yes, he did. <laughs> in the front press row. conference. Wasn't he in the front row? <laughs> no, he was off to the side. Oh, okay. That's right. I, I remember him asking a question, though. It was yo. He said yo. <laughs> he said yo. <laughs> he said yo to uh, Steve Peterson. He goes, yo, why you fire our coach? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's who was on the elevator with Scott. We got uh, we got Davison, we got Moose, we got Osborne. I can't tell who else is back there, but we got some. You, you see this, Gary? Uh, yeah. Who else? Who else we got back here? Uh, isn't that uh, isn't that for Sean? Uh, I don't know. And it's Trev behind David. The tr Trev? It looks like Trev. Why would Trev be there? Trev? They had all the alumni. Remember they had a big oh, meeting. Oh, that's in right. Yeah, yeah. I think you're right. I think that is Trev back there. I think it's Trev. Gosh, I don't remember Trev being wow. there. How weird. Yeah. 
All right, can we make this quick? I gotta get back to Omaha. I got business you know to tend to. In in about uh, three and a half, four years, I'm gonna fire you. <laughs> <laughs> then here's a yeah, that is there. There's a bit of ironic. Here's yeah, the irony. here's the shot of uh, Frost getting into his dented truck for the <laughs> for the last time when he leaves. Do you, do you know one of the people? Can that show, look, there's me. At can, a press can you show? Hey. Can you show him sliding down the pole? <laughs> Come on. Come on. I love for old that. Ti- for old times. So. Oh, so. Just ultimate trolling to to win some hearts of Nebraska fans. What if at like one thirty, the Nebraska athletic account put out Troy Dannon sliding down the <laughs> road? Please, please do this. I know these are all great ideas. Like please all the this. things that we have panned for the last five six years, Dannon does <laughs> leading up to his announcement. Please do this. <laughs> He goes out and touches the pound, the rock, rock. Just trying to fit in here, guys. <laughs> well, you know, just trying to understand. Heard this the, was a thing. Understand the traditions yeah. and things <laughs> like that. I love every one of these ideas today, by the way. Okay. I'm now, I'm now in a deep hole. I'm looking through the photos <laughs> of Frost's introductory press conference and man, what a, what a time that was. We were all di- very different people in 2017. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and we got challenged that day as well about his family. That's yeah. right. We and don't talk about my family. Stern, like very in a side session. Yes. Well, he's a family man, but we don't talk about the family. <laughs> Something that we will not talk. Uh, about. We got baseball news. Uh, Nebraska K State has been canceled. Oh, what? what's going to happen to the RPI? Forecasted cold temperatures game has been canceled, not postponed. Has Straight been up canceled. canceled. Yep. Ain't going to play that again. So they will take on another purple wildcat this weekend instead. Oh, Sorry, Northwestern? Guys. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, Conference it's, it's, time already? Oh, yeah. It's wildcat week. Sad. Yep. Uh, safe travels out to uh, Vegas. Thank you. Have yeah. fun. We will. Probably a letdown from Pittsburgh, but I get it. You'll be, <laughs> <laughs> you'll be seeing me tomorrow on, on a video stream with... Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll have my guns out. Maybe I'll be yeah. wearing a bucket hat. Maybe yeah. I'll be wearing some sunglasses. You go bro tank. I don't. I really own any bro okay. tanks. Go bro tank with a pocket. Maybe gonna, I'll just roll up the swim? sleeves. Oh I, yeah. I mean, there's pool. Yeah. I'm. If there is pool, I swim. <laughs> if there is bar, I drink. You gonna wear that wedding ring? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whoa. Just looking out for your wife. Wear it all the time. I, I guess I'll wear a different version of this so it doesn't, you know, fall. Oh, off like, like a Quelo. Yeah, I'll, I'll like a silicone. Get the rubber version. Yeah, yeah. it's always a good one. Okay. Mm-hmm. You ever think about getting a tattoo of it? No, I never thought about getting a tattoo. No. Have you ever thought no, about getting a tattoo? Um, I don't need to wear one of those. So, no, but just a tattoo in general. Um, no, not on my own. Not on your own. <laughs> like if you lost a bet or something. Oh, no. oh okay. yeah. Oh, okay. I was. So I was in a relationship about twenty years ago, and she got a tattoo that i could you know she at the time she said you'll be the only person that'll ever see this oh oh, <laughs> oh did i know oh um and nice. she said if i get one of those why don't you get something that only i can see uh-huh. and i'm like well what if i got it on my ankle <laughs> <laughs> nobody really sees my ankle yeah so i i did not i i uh it ink isn't for me yeah but i see more and more guys you know probably because their wives are like dude uh, don't even think about it or they lose their ring they go and they get the tattoo of you know the, the wedding ring on their finger doesn't pj have that does pj fleck have that i thought he did Maybe. if there's I, any I football be, coaches i might tattoos be wrong. of wedding rings on i their, might be yeah. on their fingers i need to see either pj has he'd be the one wife. that you would he would like, be like like he's ryan just da- odd enough ryan day doesn't strike me as that no guy. no so. either pj does or his wife does i can't remember I uh like has ink yeah, yeah he does yeah he has i think he He's would be one of those on guys. Calf. Like if he showed up he at does. Big Ten Media Days this year and had an arm sleeve, you would be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Vertical. And he would wear a short sleeve shirt. He'd wear the short sleeve shirt button down with a tie just so you could see it. There's a new bit. Josh, Photoshop tats on all the Big Ten football <laughs> coaches and just okay. see which one would be the now, best. Now, sir. Bielema has a tiger hawk on his calf, right? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. He tried to get it removed, I think. Yeah. But, uh, uh, Vertical ink running down PJ Flex Achilles tendon now reads this too shall pass oh sure okay poll question from happers beam guy if there is pool do you swim <laughs> all right 
Put what do you there? think? So we, we talked about fat coaches. Like you don't see a lot of Mark Manginos anymore. No, you don't. No. Um, what do you think the reaction would be if a prominent college football coach had visible ink? Like had like even on like the neck? Well, not the neck, but what about like on the forearm? Like the oh, forearm okay. yeah. or like an arm sleeve. Mm-hmm. Um, ooh. He's got to uh, re- really be about it, you know? Yeah, I feel like it's probably more accepted now than it would have been like 20 years ago. Yeah. There's but like you a, do not see. No, you don't. You do you not don't. see college football coaches or nope. college basketball coaches with visible ink. We are in the day and age of, uh, of the corporate college football coach. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. What's Dan Campbell's tattoo situation? I know it's not college, but he's got to have something. He's, yeah. Well, I think it's on his. <laughs> yeah. I think it's on his bicep, but he's Bar- always Bar- got, <laughs> he always has it covered. <laughs> He's got barbed wire. He's yeah, whatever dead. happened to the barbed wire? That was oh, popular. Yeah, then it, get it, the barbed wire. I'll wasn't. tell you what happened. It's, it's a bad day, too. <laughs> tell Tim Dwight that. He got it, and I was like, well, I might consider that. Oh, it was no, cool. I don't want to mess with the person. With it the was cool looking tattoo. for a while. And then, yeah. <laughs> then there was the movie Barbed Wire, too, and she had that. But, yeah, I digress. That's just Casablanca, by the way, that plot. <laughs> it is. Look it up. Um, I've, never, I've never analyzed the movie Barbed Wire. You should. It's great. Um, <laughs> Just know Pamela was great. I googled Dan Campbell tattoo just to find out, you know, what kind of ink he has. Come on, did it take on. you to a weird place? Yeah, give it to me. It took me to a post on uh, X, formerly Twitter, and it says it's a picture of his arm. Now I don't know if this is the football coach Dan Campbell or just somebody named Dan Campbell. <laughs> if you feel your lake overflowing, I'll drink your water on his arm. That sounds like a Dan Campbell. Thing. It's really weird. That that feels very Dan Campbell, like the, the, time the head the coach of the Lions. This is not the football Campbell. coach. Oh, it's not okay. Damn it! Because I, I can, I can I see do, that a Dan Campbell saying. I do want someone to have like a a, a phrase on their uh-huh. heart, like it's gonna be okay, yeah. or something like that, <laughs> like in cursive, like all the girls yeah. have. That they'll just be a little little message somewhere. Why do you have all these messages on your body? <laughs> just write them in the notes app on your phone. And after the shower, a rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> after the storm. <laughs> this too shall pass. My mic just collapsed on that one. This, this too shall pass is right in that in that room. Yeah. 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 It's an inspiring message. Yeah. You think shock is smart. Has oh yeah, and that's why he has gone with the yeah. yeah. Long Maybe song his arm just has a big oh, good question. Eat, pray love on it. <laughs> In this house, we jump on the court during games. <laughs> you don't see like you don't see visible ink on college football. No, you're coaches. right. You're right. Oh yeah, Patino's uh, Louisville tattoo on his on his shoulder. That's right. That's that's a good one. And we don't want to have that visible during a game. Nope, but. Uh, oh, it was got, visible once. Yeah, he's got the man stamp. All right. Well, you guys have a great uh, a great day. Have great fun in uh, Vegas. I will. Yeah. Have I promise. Fun. Stay safe. Don't promise to have fun. Are you now? Do you have a limit of how much money you're taking to bet? No. Sports book table. You're just so you're wide open. Just unlimited? do it responsibly. Yeah. What? Real, real quickly here. What is the plan to initiate Nick to Las Vegas? Because it's going to be sensory overload for the first few hours for him. This is his first Vegas. Hey, make sure you tell him that all the people handing out cards on the strip, like take as many as you need. (laughs) I think he'll, I think he'll, you know, try and play it cool a little Mm bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, like, we're not going to, we're not going to haze him. No, no. (laughs) But he needs to also understand that like, it's better for the show if he does ask some of those questions, like, Hey, what is that? What? I think he'll do that naturally. Okay. I think he'll do that naturally. I don't think we have to bait him into anything, mm-hmm. you know, just there, let Nick be Nick. Yeah. There'll, there'll be some content. That's for sure. Yeah, that's All right. Good. Have a good, uh, rest of your week, gentlemen. See you boys. That is the crossover powered by every level concrete repair in Omaha at every level We'll start things off next. That's the crossover. The Connor Happer show is next on 1620. The zone. get a lot of junk in your inbox this one not junk not junk at all 1620 the email exclusive content contests other stuff probably subscribe today at 1620thezone.com your omaha area forecast from a godfather's pizza weather center and ketv news watch 7 on 1620 the zone Watch out for slick spots Tuesday morning with light snow chances sticking around the metro before 8 a.m. Otherwise, expect windy and cold conditions throughout the day. Northwest winds will gust 30 to 40 miles per hour with highs in the low to mid-30s. 
I'm meteorologist Sean Everson from KETV Newswatch 7. The Zone Hotline is powered by 42 Degrees, the source by your mom's house. Lindley Clothing in Omaha has been the premier provider of men's fashion for over 88 years, from suits to jeans with great brands like Jack Victor, Bugatti, Peter Millar. Your father was a customer. You're a customer. Your son is a customer, and now they're looking for the latest sportswear to tailored clothing. Lindley Clothing has you covered. They will help you get the look that you need with their selection and top-notch customer service. You walk in the door, and there's John and Marlene and the entire Lindley Clothing team with a great smile on their face, and they're to help you. 132nd and West Dodge in Linden Market to pick up the latest styles and enjoy easy access shopping. What goes perfect with the madness of March? The convenience of Cubby's downtown in the old market, 13th and Jackson. And if you're gearing up to watch the game, Cubby's has what you need. You'll find a full meat counter with steaks, burgers, chicken, and homemade brats. Hot and fresh deli food, including Chester's Chicken and Godfather's Pizza Express. Pop, water, beer, and a full liquor department. See you at Cubby's Old Market, the very best in convenience. Open 24 hours at 13th and Jackson. Do you like to shoot fireworks? Would you like to get paid to shoot fireworks? DM Displays wants you. Help shoot an Omaha Storm Chasers game, Memorial Park Display, or any of the major shows in Western Iowa and all of Nebraska. If you like to travel, JM covers Nebraska, Kansas, and most of Missouri. They offer free training and great daily pay rates, which makes it a perfect part time job. Visit JMDisplays.com and click the Join Our Team tab to find out more. JM Fireworks. Hi, this is John Bishop. Since the day I got my driver's license, I've had a check next to the organ and tissue donor box. It's a selfless gift because healthy organ donors can save up to eight lives. And with tissue donation, dozens more can get the gift of sight and burn victims can get life-changing skin grafts. Anybody can register and there's no cost to you or your family. Check that organ donor box next time you renew your license or visit goodguyssavelives.com. Learn more about organ and tissue donation today and see how you can save eight lives at goodguyssavelives.com. Need food for a meeting? Make sure it goes right from start to finish. Order on easycater.com, one simple, reliable platform. With over 100,000 restaurants from national chains to local favorites, it's easy to find food for any taste or dietary need. And Easy Cater has your back with 24-7 support to make sure everything goes right. Client lunches, team meetings, sales calls, company events, 100,000 restaurants, one platform. Order online at easycater.com. College basketball's biggest tournament is coming, and it's time to start betting like a pro with the world's largest sports book right at your fingertips. Circa Sports Iowa. It's sports betting the way it should be. High betting limits, tight money line splits, exceptional customer service, and more. Fund and bet like a pro anywhere, anytime. It's never been easier. Download your new bookie before all of the March action at CircaSports.com. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-238-7663. It's the Connor Happer Show. Are we sure we want to do this? Uh, could you, like, make an announcement that we're ready? It's the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. All right, welcome in. Happy Tuesday. It's the Connor Happer Show here on 1620 The Zone and on 1620thezone.com. Connor Happer and TV's Josh Odson. With you, still famous. 15 minutes oh, yeah. of fame hasn't worn off yet. Internet doesn't forget. No, no, no. Screenshots number, live forever. Number of pitch meetings have been happening this week. I might get my own show on True TV. Not sure. Very exciting. Right after uh, Impractical Jokers. Uh, could be me. Or you could be a, an Impractical Joker. Yep. That's what they should do for the tournament every year. Hey, <laughs> thanks for watching on these Turner Networks. And enter into this contest. Sign up for our email list. And... <laughs> You could be an impractical joker for an episode, and you could laugh loudly with old gentlemen. <laughs> okay, now call him fat. <laughs> it's a great show, Josh. It's always on. <laughs> it's always, always on. They must have made 600 episodes of that. <laughs> All right. Uh, welcome to the show. Great Th- question. I'm going to look that up now. Today we'll talk about Alan, or we'll talk to Alan Bell. We'll probably talk about him too uh, at 1130. Um, he is. We we are excited for Creighton, Tennessee, for that reason. We asked Alan last week, "Hey, when's Tennessee going to blow mm-hmm. it?" And it might just set up for that to happen on Friday night in Detroit. Gas up your Chevrolet, <laughs> Holy Palomino! 
Uh, 247 episodes of Impractical That's Jokers. so many episodes! 40 specials <laughs> and a movie. Five seasons in a movie? Yeah. yeah. Or was it three seasons in a movie? Six seasons. Six in seasons a in a movie, damn it. Uh, they they are watched, in the, I watch Community. They're in the midst of their 10th season of Impractical Jokers. They're ripping off about 30 episodes a season, probably? Yep. Yeah, hell yeah. Anyway, AB will join us at 11.30. We'll talk Creighton, Tennessee tournament uh he was throwing out like creighton baseball bets ideas yesterday which was hilarious so th this guy's on everything <laughs> we'll talk to ab coming up in a little while uh jacob bigelow of huskers illustrated will recap the uh the weekend for nebraska and his trip when he was walking in memphis i it was it was painted red they painted the town red i, I i'm curious how his uh, trip to graceland <laughs> was yeah did it go upstairs did he get to, did he get to see elvis i've had a bad weekend let me upstairs <laughs> i need to go where elvis went i don't know if he's dead but i need to go where he went he's been gone for a long time i need to go there i want to sit on that toilet all right um give me a several peanut butter banana sandwich banana sandwiches uh that's the lineup by the way powered by the referees john higgins weather guard want to hear from you on the show 402-951-1620 on the 42 degrees of source hotline you can call or you can text that number hello tweet at happer show at connor happer at producer underscore josh on the jtech instructions on twitter feed email connor or josh o at 16 josh o at 1620 the zone.com on the equitable bank zone inbox we say good morning to our youtube watchers today Josh is pointing at you. You know, you know that means it's, it's going to be good. We're 48 hours away from uh, opening day of Major League Baseball. Um, I'll be gone tomorrow, travel day. You know, travel day, Josh. Travel day. And then uh, we'll be back, and me and Josh Peterson and Josh Hodson will just tear it up for about eight hours as uh, Josh and I, other Josh and I, will be sitting poolside in Vegas for Thursday and Friday's shows. Now that's one you're going to really want to tune into zone TV for. Yeah. You're going to want to see the vibes. Yeah. You're, you're going to want to see what's going on. Over Connor there. has promised not to wear a shirt. Oh yeah. Nips out. Show. Nips out. I don't know if they'll allow that, but yeah, I'll do it. Will care. they allow that? Vegas has a tight <laughs> rule about clothing. The I'm amount sure. of clothes that yes. you can, that you're allowed to wear. I don't think Vegas has a minimum, actually. It's funny that way. No, I don't. Can we get some type of like uh, tip edition? Uh, so like people can tune in and they can start tipping us like, ooh, oh, those are some nice nips. Connor here. Here's five bucks. Sure. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know how, but mm -hmm. maybe it's a new feature on our uh, on our upgraded StreamYard account. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, we'll, we'll throw that out there. OK, um, but yeah, we'll be uh, we'll be there. Thursday and Friday for the games. I'll be a giant ball of stress watching Creighton on Friday night. Um, and luckily we'll be back if they make it to the Elite Eight, we'll be back in time for the for the Sunday game so I can stress out in the comfort of my own home, which is exciting. But yeah, we're we're uh, we're excited to be there and our, our winner of the of the of the giveaway, you know, will be around as well. Wonder if that person will want to have anything to do with us. I guess we'll find out in a mere uh, 24 hours or so here. Uh, elsewhere on the show today, we will um, we'll talk about hip drops. How the NFL has gone soft, soft, soft flags soft already. Uh, Shohei Otani reads um, the Bachelor. Troy Dannon will be talking today. Um, Shadur Sanders in Colorado are talking again because it's the off season. That's all they do. Yep. Um, narratives in college basketball mm. um and then i have created a potentially fun blind coach resume game love this idea so uh, i'm gonna give josh uh we have as many i mean we have like probably 10 or 15 of these um but like probably five to seven coaches i'll read you their postseason accomplishments in the last 10 years and josh will attempt to match a coach to the resume the worst one is calipari are you sure i mean we'll find out i can't wait. i can't wait I'm, pretty sure. in fact you know what we're gonna do that segment like coming up soon okay because good. i'm so excited to get I, it off i saw that it was on there so yeah. i didn't i didn't look at them i didn't read through them i didn't 
you know, ooh, yeah, who could that be? All right, so why, why don't we just do that coming back? Okay, we'll just we'll just do that right off the uh, off the bat today. Is we're uh, I love games. A couple days away from uh, Creighton playing in the Sweet Sixteen again, and uh, just two days away from opening day in Major League Baseball, which uh, I don't know. I'm I'm starting to finally feel the buzz for. We, we do have to at some point. In the next few days, Josh, we have to do our uh, season predictions. Yeah, we got we got to do some picks. Our ovaries and undies. I don't know if you want to do that Thursday. Or probably can't do it today. Yeah, Thursday probably. Yeah. We'll, we'll tie something together. Okay, so that's the plan. That's the setup. Uh, once again, we'd love to hear from you guys. We are off and running on a Tuesday. We'll come back and we'll uh, we'll see if Josh can get cooking here on this blind coach resume game. Postseason success. Does it reflect how we feel about college basketball coaches and the stature and the tenure that they have received over a period of time? We'll find out if it matches next on 1620 The Zone. The Connor Happer Show. Who's pitching tonight? Uh, you Darvish, having a great year. The Connor Happer Show. I know about that guy. On 1620 The Zone. What a mess. Big names, big games. We've got them all. 1620 The Zone. Are you a delivery driver looking for a better job opportunity? Post Coffee is a local family-owned coffee, water, and vending company that has been in business since 1972. We are growing, and we now have openings for delivery drivers and other positions starting at $22 an hour with full benefits. If you're interested, visit hostcoffee.net slash careers to connect with us. Post Coffee is always roasting something good for you. Hi, this is Doug Nodgard with Equitable Bank. Great service never goes out of style. When the digital age dawned, many said computers would be able to handle many of the interactions that used to take a person. Boy, were they wrong. How many times have you called your bank and gotten a recording to press one or two? Not at Equitable. Not only does Equitable answer your call in the first ring, it's answered by a human being. That's because Equitable Bank values its customers. Equitable Bank, we take banking personally, member FDIC. There's no better thing than to help others in their time of need. John Bishop here to invite you to be an organ and tissue donor at goodguyssavelives.com. Anyone can register, regardless of age or medical condition. Donor hearts and lungs save lives. Donor tissue makes recovery from surgery easier. Next time you renew your license, check that organ and tissue donor box or visit goodguyssavelives.com. Learn more about organ donation today and see how you can save eight lives at goodguyssavelives.com. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ziprecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. Velocity Clinical Research in Omaha frequently conducts clinical trials for a broad range of investigational treatments. Typical studies involve medications for high cholesterol, diabetes, infectious diseases, acne, and others. Some current studies include low T, COPD, flu, pediatric, infant, and RSV. They also perform vaccine studies for people of all ages, conducting innovative research that has a positive impact on lives. See current trials at VelocityClinicalTrials.com. Compensation for study-related time and travel. Find out more at VelocityClinicalTrials.com. Hi, I'm Kamiko, the founder of Miko's Hot Chicken. When we started our family restaurant, we were also raising a family. But let me tell you, it wasn't easy. Our Chase Inc. car was there to reward us on all of our business needs. Now we have a thriving location, and we're hungry for more. With the Chase Inc. Business Unlimited card, you can earn unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase, so your business can go from here to possible. Chase for business. Make more with yours. Real business owners compensated for their participation. Cards issued by JPMorgan Chase Bank and member FDIC. Subject to credit approval. Terms apply. 
eBay Motors is here for the ride. Go ahead, feel your engine. Admire that perfectly installed exhaust. Your vehicle's moving along this freeway like it was made from fresh installs and a whole lot of love. With eBay Motors, you get over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Tickets for less. Best seats. Best prices. No service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. Let's get back to the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone. I don't know what hit me last night, but I this is this is an idea that came to me post midnight last night. Oh, Josh time. Yeah, it was it was right in the heart of Josh time, primetime Josh time, really. And so um I, I forget what the even impetus of it was, like the preamble, but um here here's the parameters on the game we're about to play. So I was thinking about the active coaches, active college basketball coaches career wins leaders I, I guess i wondered where mac was and and so i kind of looked through the names and um obviously we've had a recent run of some historically awesome coaches who have been who had been at jobs for 40 plus years retire in recent years and there's probably another couple that are that are winding down at the moment and um then I was thinking about 10 years and stuff like that. Anyway, here's the parameters on this game that we're about to play. Okay. You have had to be at your current school for 10 years, for at least 10 years. Okay. All right. And so if you if you go down the list of active coaches in their career wins who have also been at their school for 10 years, you'll find this list. And here are some of the coaches that are going to appear on this on on this blind resume game, Josh. Okay. John Calpari. Sure. Bill Self. Uh -huh. Those are the two I was thinking of. Dana Altman. Mark Few. Jim Laranega. Tom Izzo. Kelvin Sampson. Randy Bennett. Fran McCaffrey. Greg McDermott. Matt Painter. Tommy Amaker. Okay. All right. Those are some, those are some of the names. Now, there's other names on, this, on the all-time wins list who are active who just haven't been at their current school for 10 years. Guys like Rick Pitino, uh, Rick Barnes is close, Steve Alford, uh, Herb Sendek, uh, Jamie Dixon, Mick Cronin, Thad Mata. Uh, those guys will not be included in this game. All right? So postseason success, it often changes how we think about college basketball coaches. And I think it, it specifically in Greg McDermott's case, it's it's – Changed it a lot, right? I mean, uh, obviously, you know, the, the numbers are hard to ignore even without the tournament success. He's He would have been Creighton's all-time winningest coach, you know, pretty much no matter what, I guess, unless he left, which that's not happening. Um, And so he would have probably gotten there anyway, but the postseason success has really put him over the top. He's the greatest Creighton basketball coach ever. It was just between him and Dana Alban. He's passed him. Even though he doesn't have more wins than him, he's got more postseason success. We were talking about postseason success with Ryan Kalkbrenner yesterday. It's going to be a great scene against Florida A and M next year, or may, I guess maybe even this year if things go right, where he passes Tana Altman. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, do you, I don't know. There will be a big celebration for it. Two, two behind. If it happens at home early next year, it will. Right? He's two behind. Right? Uh, yeah. He would have to get to the Final Four to tie. Yeah. You'd have to get to the national championship game to go ahead. So I mean, it hey, it's cut out of the because you're gonna need to get if it if it happens next season. Sorry to go on this tangent. Go for it. it. You're you're gonna have to kind of gas up attendance a little bit. Sure. And, and what better that's way? It's a good way to do it. What better way than hey, we're gonna celebrate Mac tonight? Okay. All right. Uh, so that's that's a thought. All right. Let me give you uh, let me give you some rundowns here, Josh. Okay. Tournament success in the last ten years, and I want you to try and. It, and it's they're going to come out of the names that I just listed. Um, I want you to try and match. If you if you can, we we'll, we can give you some clues along the way if you if you need it. 
Coach number one okay. has been to, in the last 10 tournaments, last 10 tournaments, there was no tournament in 20. People forget. People indeed forget. Two Final Fours, three Elite Eights, three Sweet Sixteens. So these, this is just when they got eliminated, right? So technically, what? Six, uh, eight Sweet Sixteens. One round of 32 loss. And this coach is still alive in this tournament. So another Sweet 16, at least. Still alive in this tournament. Yes. Uh, I guess I need to go quicker than this, don't I? Um, you, take as much time as you need. We could talk through it. We could, we could talk through it. Feels like, a, feels like a Bill Self or a Gonzaga. Gonzaga is correct. Okay. Mark Few has the most impressive resume on this mm-hmm. list in terms of postseason success. They've been to the Sweet 16 in each of the last 10 years. Yeah. Which it, it, it's incredible. Even, and, even, and, and even if you're like, if you're like, oh man, we're sick of going to the Sweet 16. Okay. They mm-hmm. went to a national championship game, two Final Fours, three Elite Eights. Uh, they're in the Sweet 16 again this year. There was only one time where they lost before getting to the Sweet 16 over the last 10 tournaments. And that was the first. Of the 10, I believe. And remember, I don't know, a month ago, six weeks ago, we were like, hey, Gonzaga really needs to win three times against St. Mary's or yeah. they're not going to make the tournament. That's Mark Few. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's about as impressive as, as this is going to get, just to, just to lay it out there for you. All right, coach number two in the last 10 tournaments has been to two Final Fours, two Elite Eights, one sweet 16. Well, remember, this is just when they lost. Mm-hmm. They've lost in the round of 32 twice. They've lost in the round of 64 twice. And once did not go to a postseason tournament at all. Oh. Now, before you said that, I was going to say Bill Self. It is not Bill Self. Um, it is not Bill Self. Wow. Uh but you're in the right territory. Mm. Wait, what does that mean? That, my friend. Is Calipari? Is John Calipari. Yeah. So he's got the high-end success, uh-huh. but he's also got four years in which he didn't make the Sweet 16 out of, well, five years. Five out of the 10 years, he hasn't made the Sweet 16. That's usually the expectation. And two out of the last, I, I guess, they haven't been to a Sweet 16 in, in in more than five years now, I think, because they ran, they they lost the round of thirty, they, they lost the round of sixty four this year. They got upset by St. Peter's two years ago, and I want to say they only won one game last year. Uh, last Sweet Sixteen appearance, twenty nineteen. There you go for Kentucky. Interesting, Mister Thirty Three Million Dollar Buyout himself. I, that, I I think they might pay it. That is John Calipari, coach number three, Josh. Uh, in the last 10 tournaments has appeared in one final four, one elite eight, two sweet 16s, three times they lost in the round of 32. So they won one game and three times they went to the NIT. Whoa. So once again, one huge run of the final four. One Elite Eight, two Sweet Sixteens, three round of 32 losses, and three NITs. Now, before before you try and guess who that is, okay. I'd say that's a pretty decent resume, right? They've made they've made pretty good runs. Yeah. Like that could be if we're talking about expectations for a program over that period of time. If that was a 10-year run for Creighton, I'd be like. I would probably sign for that. Mm-hmm. Three NITs, but you made the tournament in every other year. You won it, and every year you did make the tournament, you won a game. This coach is not in this tournament currently. Dang it! They did make this tournament, but they were they are not currently in this tournament. I was going to say Kelvin Sampson before you said that. That is Dana Altman. Oh, that yeah, is Dana okay. Altman. Yeah. They don't consistently make it, do they? 
I mean, seven out of ten years, I think, is pretty good. Oh no, that's like, good. That's so, good enough. So Don't oft, get me wrong. Oftentimes we do this and we're like, oh man, you know, you know, coaches get to the tournament every, but especially the coach of his stature and the program of that stature, mm-hmm. like s- some years are are down years, and I think this year was, you know, going to be headed that direction because of the injuries that they had at Oregon this year. Um, but they found a way to win the Pac-12 tournament, and they got all the way to the NCAA tournament, and then they won a game. Um, and so that's a really good 10 years, in my opinion. Got to a Final Four. Yeah. Got to an Elite Eight. Got to two other Sweet 16s, so went to the Sweet 16 four times. And then made the tournament three other times, and then went to the NIT three times. It's it, th- That's pretty clean for a program like Oregon. Definitely. Coach number four in the last 10 years has been to... Two Final Fours, one other Elite Eight, one other Sweet 16. Four times they lost in the round of 32, uh, including this year, by the way. One first round exit and one first four exit. First four eggs. First four eggs. So round oh. of 68. Technically, I guess, one of the final yeah. 68 teams in. So high, some high-level success. Um, And, you know, kind of spoiler alert, like it's a pretty good program historically mm-hmm. and a very good coach historically, but round of a, a whole lot of years where they win one game, a whole lot of years where they go, where they, where they, you know, bow out pretty early in the NCAA tournament. That uh, Izzo? is Tom Izzo. Mm. Josh, nice job. That is Tom Izzo. Indeed. Um, and I think that one of the two final fours was at the very, very beginning of when I started tracking of the of the 10 years. Uh coach number five. I don't I hope people are um uh, I don't know. I'm having fun doing this. I'm having so, fun. Okay, good. All right, good. All right, coach number five, blind coach postseason resume. I'm only having fun because I'm getting some of them right. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> this, this you're, you're doing a good job, and I gave you some options. Mm-hmm. So it's, but it's still hard. It is. Uh, coach number five is still alive in this tournament. One elite eight, one sweet sixteen, two round of thirty two exits, two first round exits, two nits, and one year where they did not go to a postseason tournament out of the last 10 years. Uh, sounded like Mac until the end there. That's that is Mac. It is Mac. That okay. is Mac. Yeah, they didn't go they didn't go to any tournaments in 2015, the year after Doug. Um but okay, so let's let's take it let's let's take a second and, and think about this 10 years. Okay. All right. So, at least another sweet 16. So, three s- sweet 16s and that's in the last 4 years. One of them was an Elite Eight. It could be another Elite Eight this year. It could be a Final Four this year. Two years in which they won a game. Two years in which they made it but did not win a game. Two NITs and one no postseason. If I were to tell you that that exact format will copy and paste for the next 10 years, randomly mixed in there, do you sign on that dotted line? doesn't have to be Mac. just i'm just talking about like expectations for creighton basketball hell you could ever you, you could even do it for nebraska 10 nebraska is going to take that in a heartbeat right uh are you telling me this 10 years ago or 10 years from today i'm telling you this 10 years from today okay because because we we now have the past yeah he he, he broke the seal so you're so you're going to take that of, of sweet 16 um 10 I, years I, think I would 10 years i i guess you know, it's probably let's just say no final fours. Uh-huh. Let's just say no final fours. Yeah. But um at least at least three sweet sixteens. And at least f- four other times where you're making the tournament. So seven out of ten years you are in the tournament, and three of them are gonna be sweet sixteens. And then the other three years you're not gonna make the tournament. Do you sign on that dotted line? I think I would. I do. Yeah. I, I I do, Josh. Now, I wonder if Creighton fans do. Are they, are they a little? I think we're drunk. 
I th- a I th- little bit. I think we're drunk and high off of uh, some success here. Because mm-hmm. I, 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 I still found myself sort of thinking about the potential reaction of what Saturday night would have been like had they not won that game. And it would have been, I don't know, like, we, we would eventually come to our senses of like, mm-hmm. yeah, this is, you know, everything's it's tough to win in it, the NCAA yeah, tournament. It's still really healthy and it's still really good. But now we have gotten attached to going to the second weekend every year. Yeah. And that's not normal. Like, that's what I wanted to get across here. That's not normal. There's very few programs that do that ever, let yes. alone yes. consecutive. Getting to the second weekend is hard mm-hmm. AF. So, um, I, even even with the previous successes over the last decade, I still take the next 10 looking copy and paste exactly like that. I do. I think that's a really good, um, maybe even less than that. That's a really good expectation for Creighton basketball. That's like, you know, because we do we do that all the time, right? We talk about coaches and we're like, oh, you know, can you go to the tournament three out of every four years? We I know that we do that with Nebraska all the time. Can you go to the tournament three out of every five years or this, this, and this? Well, copy and paste that over. Can you go, um, you know, six out of 10 years and do you win a game one year? And you're right, Josh. Nebraska fans would take that because that'd be a lot of tournament success compared to no tournament success, right. notably. Some is more than none. Some is more than none. Great breakdown by me. I got a couple more if you're interested. Please. All right, coach number six. This is a fun one. Four times has won a game, won, made it to the round of 32 and lost. Two other times, they've made it to the tournament and not won a game. One time, they made it into the first four and did not win a game. Two times, they went to the NIT. One time, they did not go to a postseason tournament at all. So once again, six NCAA tournament appearances, four wins, no sweet 16s, nothing beyond that, obviously, but you're in the tournament seven out of 10 years. Um, Who am I talking about? First of all, who am I talking about? And then I'm going to ask you a question about, uh, about expectations again. Is that, is that Matt Painter? That is not Matt Painter. That is an interesting guess, though. It is not Matt Painter has had a little more success. Yeah. A little more success. Um, I got to admit, some of those names towards the bottom of that list I have forgotten. Yeah. Uh, that is a. Um, I wonder if anybody. Let's see. Is anybody playing along with this on, on YouTube here? No. Not okay. that I see. That's fine. That is Fran McCaffrey. Oh, okay. So Fran McCaffrey. That makes more sense. Yeah. Um, who is uh, like. You know, is he going to retire? Is he going to leave? I think that's still kind of up in the air for them right now. They lost what last night in the NIT or a couple nights ago. Um, once again, seven NCAA tournaments in 10 years. If I told you that they were going to go to the NCAA tournament, let's just let's just flip this over to Nebraska real quick, because I think this is a good barometer. If I told you that Nebraska is going to go to the NCAA tournament seven out of 10 years, and you cannot ask any more questions. <laughs> would you sign that? Yeah, would you sign over your soul for that? You'd have to, right? I think so. Yes. As opposed to once every 10 years. <laughs> right, right, right. But we like to dream a little bit. Sure. We like, to, Yeah, they correct. That is what I, I guess they've made it. Yeah, it's once in the last 10, mm-hmm. 10 tournaments. Um, and then once in the 10 tournaments before that too. Um, so seven out of 10 years, you're in the NCAA tournament, but you're never going past the round of 32. You're never getting out of the first weekend. And in three of those years, you're going to, you know, either be in the NIT or not go to the postseason. Like there's a potential that you're going to have one real stinker in there. Much like Mac. I mean, this, this it honestly looks a little bit like Mac, but Mac has more postseason success now, mm-hmm. right? Um, for for Nebraska, yeah, I think that's pretty good. But keep in mind what we're seeing at Iowa right now; they are a bit worn down. 
they feel as if they've bumped up against a ceiling. And I can't blame them for feeling that way. And maybe that's just natural. It ran its course, and we could all move on amicably. Right? Yeah. But when you look at it over a period of 10 years, you say, oh my God, he went to the NCAA tournament seven out of 10 years. Like, and he won four games. He never got to the Sweet 16. I'm sad about that. But I've been living an okay life during this period of time. Mm-hmm. Look at our neighbors to the West. They are not living a great life. That's what I was probably thinking. So, I don't know. Perspective, I feel like, is important this time of year as well. I have one more for you. Okay. This is also a funny one. One Final Four. One Elite Eight. One Sweet Sixteen. Two First Round Exits. One NIT. And four no postseasons at all. Wow, that is a real crapshoot. Uh-huh. I will ask you a question of if you would take this as well, but I would like you to guess who uh I would like you to guess who this is first. Um I'm just sort of trying to remember all the names, so I'll say Matt Painter again. It's not Matt Painter. Uh, although I I'll give you Matt Painter in a second. Matt Painter is kind of funny too. So once again, this coach has made the NCAA tournament five out of 10 years. And they've been to a Final Four. Uh And they separately went to an Elite Eight, and they separately went to a Sweet 16. But four times, uh, four I mean, the other five times, they didn't make the tournament. One time they made the NIT, the other four, they didn't go to the postseason at all. Is that Kelvin Sampson? This is Jim Laranega. Laranega. Jim Laranega. With the... uh, Depending on who he's recruiting. Yeah. Josh Hudson, do you take that? That's pretty white hot success. Yeah. Like, what? Basically, I'm asking the question: What would you give for a fight for one singular Final Four run? Yeah, in 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 a, in like a ten year period. I I give you the contract at the beginning of the ten years, and I say you're going to go to a Final Four at some point in the next huh. ten years. But there's also going to be five times entire seasons where you're just sad the entire time. God, it wasn't even. Would like- you trade one, three beautiful weeks <laughs> for five miserable years? And I'm a Kansas City Royals fan, so my answer is God, yes, I do. I really do. It's hard, and it will be hard yeah. when you suck for the five years. <laughs> But it'll be super awesome when you go to that Final Four and that Elite Eight and that Sweet 16. Miami didn't even have like one player where you're like, oh, that's the dude. That's our guy. Um, it's just a little more fun when you have the dude like that. Um, I get, I guess so. I guess I would. I mean, Final Four you is have, hard. You have the... Like you have the ability to sort of calmly look at it. Like that's, that's one thing that the contract gives you the ability to do. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but man, there but, would definitely but, be stretches like, where I would say, Oh, what did I sign up for? This is pain. And there's parts of Laranega where like, I, I, he's a historically good coach and what he did at, uh, at George Mason, like, you know, he's got that in his back pocket too, but there's also parts of Miami and Laranega where you're like, is this even real? Like what, why, why do they pop up every once in a while? Like, when they go right. to the Final Four, it's not like they belong in the Final Four. Mm-hmm. If Creighton were to make a Final Four now, considering their now year-over-year year tournament success, if Creighton were to make the Final Four this year, I don't think anybody would be like, oh, that's weird. Who are these guys? Like, you kind of know right. the guys now. Like, they're on national TV all the time, and... um Obviously, there would be a lot of conversation about what Creighton was and what they've become, but it wouldn't be like, oh, wow, they had this fantastic run because they were, you know, like Isaiah Wong shot 75% for two weeks. No, it, it wouldn't be that. Do you think if Creighton It'd be on merit. made the Final Four last year, do you think it would be a lot of, hey, great job, you finally busted through and did it, or do you think it would be a lot of, well... Bracket kind of sucked. You you were kind of in a wasteland of uh, it's you, funny you got lucky because in the moment, in the moment, that's always the takeaway. 
But if you remove yourself from it for about like two weeks, like how do we talk about it now, Josh? How do we talk about their Elite Eight run right now? Oh, they almost made the Final Four. They're play away. They almost made the Final Four, and they made they had an incredible run to the Elite Eight. Mm-hmm. If you take your if you take your brain back to that moment one year ago, you think I'm going to kill myself. This is the worst. This is so stressful. <laughs> this is the worst thing of all time. So you just get you get a little bit removed from it, and eventually you you see it for what it is. Which I mean, we we all base this off of, like nobody cares who Tom Brady beat in the Super Bowl. It's just that Tom Brady won Super Bowl, right? Right. So actually, we we kill him the most for the Super Bowl he didn't win when they were <laughs> well one of the Super Bowls they did win when they were undefeated going into it. So uh, we get this from Jacob on the YouTube. Hi, Jacob. As a Nebraska fan, I'd trade twenty five years of not making the NCAA tournament. For one singular win. Oh, wow. Jacob, I don't know. That's a hard contract. That's... You're getting boned for 25 years. For, for one. For 25 years. Ugh. I don't think so, Jacob. I, I, can't, I cannot. I, I can't. don't doubt Jacob believes that. But I'm telling Jacob. Is that how bad you want it? Yeah. Is that how thirsty you are? for an NCAA tournament win and that's real thirsty. And I don't, again, I don't doubt that Jacob feels this way, but I'm asking him to pump the brakes. But even if, like, if you don't go to the NCAA tournament for 25 years and then you randomly at one point in the 25 years, win one game, like how is that viewed? Right. What I'm saying is you want to build yourself up as a program to where like what Nebraska did this year. It's a great start. You made the NCAA tournament, and then maybe next year you can come back and win a game. Or maybe it takes another three years or five years, but during that stretch of time, you're in the NCAA tournament three more times, right? And then you yeah. finally break through. That would not be a surprise to people. Because you're just going to fire your coach every five years. Right. Right. Um, so, yeah. You want to do Painter real quick? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll give you his. Hit me with that resume. Let's see. Um, okay. Still alive this year, obviously. Um, four round of 64 losses. Three sweet 16s. One elite eight. And one no tournament. That's his last 10 years. Okay. So at least... Four Sweet Sixteens. He's he's in he's in his fourth. Uh, I'm sorry, his fifth this year. One year he went past it. That was the Carson Edwards Virginia year. That was the epic game. And then four times. So they're in the NCAA tournament every year, except for one. They're in the NCAA tournament nine out of ten years, but four times you lose in the first game, including once as a one seed. <laughs> People do not forget that. No, Josh. They, don't. they do not forget that. They could bludgeon Utah State in the round is 32, 75 more times. They could win by 600 points. And they'd be like, yeah, I don't trust them. They lost two of the, they lost to a 16 seed last that's year. Barley Dickinson. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's, that's obviously really good. But they're a little bit more of a, I don't know, historical, I wouldn't call them a historical powerhouse, but they get the fan base invested and, and all that stuff. Um, and by the way, in those round of 64 losses, thanks to Bigelow for sending this to me, those first round losses were to a 14 and a 16, and the sweet 16 loss was to St. Peter's. Oh. They lost a sweet 16 to St. Peter's, who was a 15 that year. They are a uniquely tortured fan base. Yeah, that is pretty special, isn't it? That, that is pretty different. I want to get your guys' so – we got a couple emails, texts, and comments on this, and, and we'll get to that. Um, coming up a little bit later in the show because I think it's an interesting conversation about expectations and how we view tournament success and and all that stuff. Thank you, thank uh, thank you, Josh, for playing along. Thank you, thank uh, you for not putting Bill Self in there because I, what were we going to do the year he didn't coach the tournament? <laughs> oh yeah, that's he right. gets credited with that. That that is true, but he didn't do any of the oh, work. I forgot to play my game show host music. Sorry. Oh. oh. Okay. Would you take seven NCAA tournaments in 10 years, even though you lost the first round every single time? Uh, yes, I would, Connor. Thank you. You could now win a car. Whatever. 
All right. We're going to talk about game shows and the odd news today, by the way. Can't wait. Alan Bell is coming up next on the Connor Happer Show in 1620 The Zone. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. There's no need to hunt for the prize eggs. They're waiting for you at the 42 Degrees Easter Sale. Hop on in and fill your basket with drastically reduced prices on premium cannabis, CBD, Delta, premium Kratom, American Glass up to 50% off, and disposables up to 75% off. The Easter Sale at 42 Degrees, your destination for top-tier cannabis, second-to-none product selection, and exceptional service. 42 Degrees, by your mom's house. Trees, are they all the same? Not at Lanaha. Grown from a quality seed source, handcrafted in our local farms for generations, and acclimated to our tough Midwestern climate, Lanaha's trees are different. Simply put, they're better. Much like our trees, we take great pride in being homegrown. Visit our garden center to find your next tree today. Rooted in quality, unmatched value, Lanaha Nurseries, 192nd and Center. Is your concrete cracked or uneven? Hey everyone, Coach Greg McDermott here to explain why you should choose Everlevel Concrete Repair. Many people think they need to replace broken concrete, but repairing it provides durable protection and comes at a fraction of the cost. Everlevel provides permanent repair solutions to fix your concrete and protect it against future damage. And it all comes with a long-term transferable warranty. They offer free inspections to walk you through the entire process. Call Everlevel Concrete Repair today. Hi, this is John Bishop. Since the day I got my driver's license, I've had a check next to the organ and tissue donor box. It's a selfless gift because healthy organ donors can save up to eight lives. And with tissue donation, dozens more can get the gift of sight and burn victims can get life-changing skin grafts. Anybody can register and there's no cost to you or your family. Check that organ donor box next time you renew your license or visit goodguyssavelives.com. Learn more about organ and tissue donation today and see how you can save eight lives at goodguyssavelives.com. Maverick Baseball and Softball are underway, and single-game tickets are on sale now. This Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, the weather is perfect as Maverick Baseball takes on 2023 CWS qualifier Oral Roberts at Tal Anderson Field. Omaha Softball is on a 15-game win streak and plays Creighton on April 2nd, and Maverick Baseball takes on Creighton on April 9th. Don't miss these classic matchups at Maverick Park. Get your tickets now by calling 402-554-MAVS or by going to omavs.com slash ticks. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash sports. Ramp.com slash sports. R-A-M-P dot com slash sports. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC Terms and Conditions Supply. Lindley Clothing in Omaha has been the premier provider of men's fashion for over 88 years, from suits to jeans with great brands like Jack Victor, Bugatti, Peter Millar. Your father was a customer. You're a customer. Your son is a customer, and now they're looking for the latest sportswear to tailored clothing. Lindley Clothing has you covered. They will help you get the look that you need with their selection and top-notch customer service. You walk in the door, and there's John and Marlene and the entire Lindley Clothing team with a great smile on their face, and they're to help you. 132nd of West Dodge and Linden Market to pick up the latest styles and enjoy easy access shopping here comes the money here we go money talk here comes the money, 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 money. alan bell the ab3 on the connor happer show on 1620 the zone all right we are joined by alan bell the ab3 driving the line with us on the 42 degrees source hotline alan Good morning. How are you? Good morning, sir. Fantastic. You doing all right? Uh, we're great. Are you? Uh, so you're 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 all locked. In. Are you, are you on the Creighton train this weekend? Because you're, you know, you're you're in on the Tennessee deal. 
but you got uh, you got Stump the Schwab next to you, you know, ripping off these Creighton takes. I don't know. I, I I'm, I'm interested where your uh, mental perspective is at going into the weekend here. Yeah. So I'll say this. So yeah, uh, Howie told me to tell uh, you all, everyone, that he's all over Creighton. He loves the way we talked about it. Um, I, I, I'll say this, man. Um, I'm I think I'm on the under in this game. Mm. Uh, I, I think that, you know, Creighton is going to take its time, you know, with, with the ball, use the shot clock uh, to their advantage. They could certainly shoot. Um, but I, I think that, you know, all the pressures on Tennessee, Creighton has a lot of things positively working in their favor. And this is the big question, okay? If you're Creighton, what do you do? Do you try to slow the game down, good high percentage shots, or do you try to speed it up? Because Tennessee does have a pretty good defense. Do you try to speed it up and get them out of their rhythm? Like, half the time, Tennessee can shoot with anybody. The other half, it's horrific, right? So I, I throw that question to you. But, yeah, I think I lean on the under here, and that usually means take the underdog at the point. Yeah, yesterday, uh, yesterday Greg McDermott said that Tennessee, with all, res- with all due respect to UConn, is, is – Tennessee's the best defensive team that they're that they've feel like they're going to play this year, have played this year, which is which is interesting. And and, and I don't know, it brings up an interesting sort of thought process on the on the pace because um, you know Creighton's sort of adaptable that way. Like they can they, they they can get out and run against teams that like to slow it down against them. They could slow they they could you know if they could you know they could slow it down against teams that want to get out and run a little bit as well. Usually. If there's teams that want to go, they'll kind of match them that way. Um, but defensively, I mean, Tennessee one to five is better than Creighton is, but Creighton still has the you know defensive presence in the middle that is that is kind of unique. There's a lot of different angles to this one, but you also have um, you also have the Super Bowl of white guys going up against each other <laughs> in yeah. Baylor Shireman and Dalton Connect this weekend, which is maybe equally as exciting as the game. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a big one right there. That, like, that's what's funny about this game is that these two teams are so similar that, like, they can adapt to any style. They can play any style. And they'll probably play four different styles in the game. You know what I mean? Um, it, I'll say this. You know, anybody watching from the Creighton side, um, if you can stop Dalton Connect, you're going to have an unbelievable shot at beating this team. And, and Dalton has not played well in his last three games. It has not been great. Um, so if you could limit that, like Creighton is good enough to also win the foul game as well, right? Like, I, I think that that could yeah. be another. They, they usually yeah. do. They they usually do. I was going to say, yeah, I was going to say, like, you know, they're a very, very well-coached team. Uh, like, they, 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 they're, they're fundamental. Um, the thing to worry about, though, like you said, Tennessee has the SEC Defensive Player of the Year the SEC player of the year in Dalton Connect. But if you slow down Connect, buddy, like that that is that is a massive advantage. Because not a lot of the other guys are making points like he is. You know what I mean? So that's something to pay attention to. Sure. On paper, and I know we we both have allegiances to one side or the other here, but like on, on paper, that looks to me like the most fun matchup of the weekend. I I, I agree. I, I'm I'm su- I, I'm super into Gonzaga and Purdue. I think that'll be fun. And I think Illinois and Iowa State will be really fun. I mean, it's a Sweet 16. They'll all be really good, and we have we we've we've we got chalk kind of in the first weekend, so it's lined up a really sweet Sweet 16. But I do think Creighton Tennessee, even with our biases here, that that's probably the best looking matchup on paper. Yeah, I could do. I completely agree, and I think it's going to be a, this is going to be a back and forth game. Like the more we talk about it. It's one of those where you take the underdog with the points because it's probably going to be a two to three point game either side. Um, yeah, like it, this is going to be a really fun game. And again, you know, uh, understand this: like Rick Barnes has got to win mm. this game. Like the, the pressure is all on Tennessee. So if Creighton comes out and gets hot early, dude, Tennessee, I've seen him do it. They fold on themselves quick. I think a good start from Creighton uh, can unbelievably help throughout the entire game. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting from that perspective too, because I don't know that, like, I don't know that the Hayes and the Barn, you know, for for Creighton, like, I think they feel good about where they've gotten. It's their third Sweet Sixteen in four years. 
But I, from like a mental perspective, the team is kind of, um, you know, I watched them sitting there in Pittsburgh over the weekend and they were like, they're going into a, an incredibly tense double overtime game and they're just kind of walking around and they're like, well, I, yeah, I really like yeah. being here. This is so much fun. I just like playing basketball with all my friends. So I, I, I very rarely see this team like, wear that pressure on their shoulders, which is probably a positive, but who knows? Oh, yeah. Like, especially in this one. Yeah, dude, 100%. Like, Rick Barnes and this team know exactly what time it is, right? Like, fans are all over Rick Barnes. Mm. That's what I'm going to say to the team, man. So, yeah, man. Like, the more relaxed Craig is, the more fun that they're having, dude. Huge, huge advantage, uh, Craig side. Uh, what do you think about some of the other? I mean, obviously, we got, like I said, we got some chalk in the first weekend, which I don't think is the worst thing in the world. We still mixed in the upsets. We still had the stories with Oakland yeah. and 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 Jack Golke, the dude who's just ripping off, you know, ten threes <laughs> to beat Kentucky, which was incredible. Um, but it's really set us up for an awesome Sweet Sixteen weekend. Like, what else do you like on the board for uh, for Friday and and Saturday, Thursday and Friday? Yeah, I mean, you know, what do we get out of Arizona, right? Um, you know, they, they, you know, you look at them, they look like an NBA team. On paper, they look like an NBA team. But the problem with them is that you just don't ever know what you're going to get. You know, and, and what do we get out of teams that are playing hot right now? All right, Clemson, uh, NC State, Alabama, you know, is a team that, you know, it, it, you don't want to play these teams on that, like, the, the second game of the weekend, right? But what happens when you go home for a week and then you come back? Can you turn it back on? Alabama scares me with, I don't know if they can. I've seen this team do a lot of dumb stuff all year long, mm-hmm. right? But yeah, you know, so it, especially a team that just shoots all threes and can't guard. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, that, you know, I, I worry about them. You know, Purdue, uh, they are playing phenomenal. Like, so you're good. right on that game. Like, that's another one to where both teams, like, they're exactly the same in terms of like what you get at the end, but they go about it different ways. You know what I mean? So I, I think that that one is going to be great as well. And then UConn, they're just beating the hell out of people. Man. Yeah. Like they, they're phenomenal. Yeah. That was the next thing I was going to like, I, I don't know. I, I feel like before the tournament, my thing on UConn was obviously they're the best team in the country. They yeah. look like a complete, you know, runaway train. Like there's no stopping them. They're ten and a half point favorites against a good team, a team that made the final national championship game. You know, they were in the national championship game together last year, and they're yeah. playing in the Sweet Sixteen round this year. And UConn's a ten and a half point favorite. Like they are a a a, a train that's rolling down the hill. But it's hard to win the national championship two years in a row, and it's and it's hard to sustain what they've done. With that being said. They have really shown no signs. I mean, the last team to beat them was Creighton back in, you know, yeah. in, in February. So, yeah. like, ever since then, they have been absolutely drilling people. I just wonder how you approach them because they're going to be huge favorites in every game they play the rest of the way. Yeah, they are. And, you know, the crazy thing is, like, the, the, the uh, you know, first weekend, right, 64 and 32, the teams that covered were the big favorites that were, like, 20, 21, 22. Like those were the ones covering the tight spread, man. Like we did, you know, it was it was a lot of underdogs at least from the betting perspective. Uh, you know, I look at it as if you've been betting UConn, uh, keep doing it until the, until they tell you not. To. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like you've already won two, uh, you know, bets on them. Like it, it's worth the price of admission. You know what I mean? Like it, it, you just you just ride it again, and if it doesn't happen, hey, you accept the loss. You understood it going in, but. You don't jump off the train until they tell you to jump off the train. You know, going back to the Creighton Tennessee game, is as wild as it sounds, like whoever wins that game really has a great shot at getting like not only Final Four, but the national championship. Like these two teams are phenomenal all around. I, I man, like I, I know it's chalk, but this is gonna be an Awesome, awesome. Yeah, weekend. you can pretty much convince me of any Final Four at this point. <laughs> yeah, you really can. Like that's the thing, man. Like you really, really can. Like, what do we get out of North Carolina? You know what I mean? Like yep. they've been playing excellent, but does that continue? Because we've seen you know cracks there. What do we get out of Duke? You know what I mean? So I mean, there's, there's there's a lot of ways this could go. Duke could. I mean, Duke is kind of scary. Like I I I kind of yeah. had them. I wondered if they might bow out early, but. 
I mean, they, they can get Houston on the right day too. So yeah, I, I think we're, we are in line for an incredible weekend. Hey, by the way, Alan, before we let you go, um, yep. I did, you, were you like throwing out Creighton baseball related bets yesterday or is that just my eyes? Uh, yeah, the best no, of I, was. It? I was, yeah. Somebody had asked about Creighton and Stanford, you know, and they were like, <laughs> Hey, why was, you know, Creighton was favored all weekend. And then, um, you know, yesterday they were the other dog. And we were talking about, like, look, you know, road sweeps, first off, are tough to, you know, come by. And, you know, Creighton had gone the last, what, the, the, the last two games now. They really got bullpen, you know, games because they have so many, you know, good arms there. Uh, and it was a tough loss, but it was like, yeah, man, like, road sweeps, brutal. Like, they're, they're so difficult to love. But Creighton's a good baseball team, man. They're fun. Watch out. Hey, and you were, you were right last week when you were talking about playing at Earth. Last week or the week before, playing at the big stadium and the wind blowing out. Yeah, great with Vashik, dude. Watch out. I'm just saying. If yes, I, I'm glad uh I'm glad you're on I'm glad you're on betting that level of college baseball. Like that's amazing. If you think if you think about like, oh, I'm gonna bet on college baseball, you're like, oh, we're you're gonna bet on what, like LSU and Tennessee or something like that. And you're like, you know what? Let's go over to the big east and see what Creighton's up to. It's the only game going Hell, on yeah. on a Monday. Let's see what's going on. Hey, going out there and owning Stanford, baby. That's what we <laughs> like right there. That's awesome. Uh, all right. So what's, uh, what are, what are you doing this weekend? Like what's on tap for, for the game watching on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Yeah. Dude, so like, I, I'm, I'm super chill at the house. Love, you know, just sit there and watch it, um, you know, and, and sweat the heck out of all of these bets. It is the last weekend, like that we get, like, yes. you got the multiple games happening. Like that's the saddest part when it starts doing like that. You're like, no, I love it. There's a thousand games going that one time. What about you? Like, what's your style? Um, well, my style is to get all the TVs out and, you know, fill up a giant cooler with a whole bunch of ice and just put, you know, everything in there just so I don't have to get up the entire day. <laughs> That's a better move. Uh, but this weekend, I will be at, in Vegas at the at the Circa, you know, the big pool. with the, Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. So, so we're doing the shows from there on Thursday and Friday, so I'll be uh, – I'll, I'll have my shirt off with a bucket hat on and I'll just be living doing some radio. <laughs> I've never been out there, dude. I, I've got, I like, I've been funny to hear how everything goes. It looks awesome. It looks insane. It looks insane. Yeah. Every time I see a picture, I'm like, wow, this is incredible. So yeah, that'll be me yeah. starting tomorrow. It should be very exciting. I love it. All right, AB. Um, enjoy this weekend, my friend. Great to chat. And uh, we'll talk to you next week. Oh, man, that's like That's great, man. It's going to be a great game. We'll talk to you, bud. Alan Bell of the AB3. And we got to maybe, like, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to skip over Alan's head, but I, that would be funny if we talked to the Schwab about Creighton basketball. It's like talking to Frank Caliendo about Creighton basketball. <laughs> Schwab's been on him all year. <laughs> He's been on him all year. He's all over Creighton. <laughs> it's such a weird thing. And who have you I guys heard that the Schwab, the stump the Schwab guy is. All over Creighton basketball. <laughs> Who am I to be like, uh, yeah. no, no Schwab. I, I mean, he's a really smart guy. I can't stump the Schwab. I wouldn't even consider no. stumping the Schwab. All right. Uh, we'll take a break. Josh has got the odd news when we return in the Connor Happer show on 1620 The Zone. Uh, but like we said, uh, we were past the first weekend and maybe your, maybe your bracket's a little busted up. Maybe you didn't go chalk this weekend. That's okay, because we got 16 teams left in the, in the tournament. And if you go into the pile, and you go to 1620thezone.com, you can get yourself assigned to the team. So we got 16, quote-unquote, winners. Then you get assigned to one of those teams, and if that team wins the national championship, you get $1,620. It's called, if you notice, I'm tiptoeing around my words here very carefully. Like this. That's why it's called censored 1620. For legal purposes. It used to have a word in the censored spot. Mm -hmm. You all can guess what that is. But it doesn't anymore. That's why it's called censored 1620. And you can enter online 1620thezone.com. Previously on Unsportsmanlike Conduct. Would you rather have to eat one hot dog every morning immediately after waking up for the rest of your life or... Every time you touch a piece of paper, it cuts you and draws blood. Well, I would rather eat, eat a hot dog oh, every morning. Give me that dog. Kevin says yes, wiping after using the bathroom. Oh, Toilet oh. paper. Ouch. Unsportsmanlike conduct with John Bishop and Josh Peterson. Weekdays 2 to 6 on 1620 The Zone. 
your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Another very chilly Tuesday with temperatures staying in the 30s throughout the day, and we're going to keep the breeze with us as well. Tomorrow, we start our temperatures in the upper teens, low 20s. Eventually, we warm into the 40s with a southeast breeze and partly cloudy skies. I'm meteorologist Luke Vickery, KETV Newswatch 7. More with Connor and Josh after this. We're going to have an extensive professional relationship, my man. On 1620, The Zone. A DJ spinning songs, cheeseburgers, raffles, and more. Just a random Saturday? Nope. It's the Spring Open House at Lust Hills Harley-Davidson. Come in, join the fun, and swing your leg over a genuine Harley-Davidson. I-29 at the Glenwood exit and at LustHillsHD.com. The world's largest sports book in Las Vegas is available right at your fingertips in Iowa. The Circus Sports Iowa app is sports betting the way it should be. Bet anywhere in Iowa and experience high betting limits, tight money line splits, and exceptional customer service. Download your new bookie today. Visit CircusSports.com and start betting like a pro from anywhere in Iowa. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-238-7633. There's no better thing than to help others in their time of need. John Bishop here to invite you to be an organ and tissue donor at goodguyssavelives.com. Anyone can register, regardless of age or medical condition. Donor hearts and lungs save lives. Donor tissue makes recovery from surgery easier. Next time you renew your license, check that organ and tissue donor box or visit goodguyssavelives.com. Learn more about organ donation today and see how you can save eight lives at goodguyssavelives.com. Maverick baseball and softball are underway, and single-game tickets are on sale now. This Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, the weather is perfect as Maverick baseball takes on 2023 CWS qualifier Oral Roberts at Tal Anderson Field. Omaha softball is on a 15-game win streak and plays Creighton on April 2nd, and Maverick baseball takes on Creighton on April 9th. Don't miss these classic matchups at Maverick Park. Get your tickets now by calling 402-554-MAVS or by going to omavs.com slash ticks. Don't you love an extra $100 in your pocket? Have a TurboTax expert file your taxes for you by March 31st to get $100 back instantly. Because no matter what moves you made last year, TurboTax makes them count. That means getting $100 back and 100% accurate taxes only from Intuit TurboTax. Must file by 331. Credit only applicable to federal filing fees with TurboTax full service. Offer can be modified or terminated at any time. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash sports. Ramp.com slash sports. R-A-M-P dot com slash sports. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. And now we've reached the point in the show where Josh Odson reads the peculiar, the bizarre, the comical, the odd news with Odd Son. Odd news, Odd Son. See what we did there? The odd news with Odd Son. Okay, Josh, let's do it. Give me the odd news. The odd news begins with an update to a story we brought you. I believe this would be the week before last. I I, I knew this update was coming. I just didn't think it would take this long. The Pittsburgh Penguins have found those Yamir Yager bobbleheads. Mm. They were stolen earlier this month. Uh, They have been returned, and the team is now preparing to hand them out to their rightful new owners. The organization released a statement yesterday saying a special 
cargo recovery team was able to negotiate the return of the bobbles. Were they stolen by pirates? And secure them at a warehouse. I am the captain now. In Ontario, California. Negotiate the return. Did they pay a ransom? It seems like it. It sure sounds like it. That's that's what it sounds like. Yeah. The mini Yagers then made their way to the Steel City and are slated to eventually arrive at... PPG Paints Arena at some point in the next week. What an arena. (laughs) The uh, bobbleheads were supposed to go to fans in attendance for the March 14th game against the San Jose Sharks. Uh, The team said the Yager bobbleheads will be made available to those with tickets to the original game starting April 6th, and it will host a drive-through pickup period at the arena as well. You know what's funny? I did think about that. Um... When, when I was there. in when I was in the building, I was like, "Oh yeah, I remember that bobblehead story." I wonder if they found them if they're if they're packed away in here somewhere. Not uh, yet. So uh, interesting. I I I'm certain that more details will pop out about that, considering the random magnitude of that story. Yeah, I mean, everybody was all over that thing. I'm gonna need so to know. We're gonna you ask paid. some questions. Yeah. Yeah. What happened? Why do we have to negotiate for our own bobbleheads? <laughs> Who had them? Why did they have them? That's right. Um, okay. I, 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 I do keep seeing uh, clips on TikTok of uh, Captain Phillips, though. <laughs> Going to have to watch that? That movie is awesome. I, no, I, it's a great movie. I've watched it probably within the last year, so I, it's probably not time to watch it again. But I want every time I see a clip, I, wa- I watch it. It's a great uh, movie. It Tom is. Hanks. It is. Um, I think I know the answer to this question. But I am going to produce a show on the on the fly here. Okay. Which story do you want for the number two story? Okay. I, ha- I have the number three story, so it is either going to be on the odd news segment or not be on at all. All right. I see. Uh, a main baseball team officially breaks Whoopie Pie world record, or the Pat McAfee makes a racist joke about Kese Tomonaga. Pat McAfee, because I don't know what Whoopie Pie is. Okay. Okay. What is that? It's a uh, snack cake, little whipped cream frosting. Yeah, in the g- give me a racist Pat McAfee. Okay. Uh, the, I haven't heard this. The Pat McAfee show has, the, now I'm just reading an article here. This is this not, is what Pat McAfee said. It has managed to largely steer clear of controversy since the Aaron Rodgers appearances have ended. Oh, yeah, he's very free of controversy. Uh, that changed yesterday as producer personality Boston Connor invoked a Japanese stereotype to make a joke about Keisei Tomonaga. Is that the guy with the mullet? I'm looking at him right now. They all have mullets. No, I think it's just the guy on the left with the mullet. The guy in the far left there. Is that him? He's not not wearing any uh, identifiable Boston stuff, but... Or is it the guy with the cowboy hat? Okay. Cowboy hat. Right. Yeah, I think it's cowboy hat guy. Sorry to the Pat McAfee stands for hold wrong. on, hold on. Let me make sure. Okay. Let yeah, we want to get this right. Wouldn't want nope, to it's a mullet. It's a mullet guy. Oh, okay. You were right. You're it's right. a mullet guy. Okay. Uh well, he does a report from the rumor mill. And oh boy. Uh it looked like an actual steel mill with the use of green screen. Uh during the segment, Boston Connor, whose real name is Connor Campbell, addressed the fallout from the Cornhusker season ending loss to Texas AM. Again, this is a quote from a different show. Quote, rumor has it that our favorite player, Kese Tomonaga, is no longer with us. And I'm not saying he's no longer with us because the Cornhuskers lost by 50. He actually performed seppuku on himself. Now, if you're not familiar with seppuku, that is an ancient uh, Japanese form of ritual suicide. Oh, no. Campbell said Kese stabbed himself through the chest in the heart because oh, he felt no. as though he had brought dishonor to his family. And then Pat McAfee chimed in. Uh, we'll go ahead and confirm it. He is not dead. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Which Boston Connor replied, well, how do you know? Oh, no. He doubled down? He doubled down. Many people have many thoughts on many sides. The bit continued on from there, adding additional fake details, such as that Tomonaga was given the sword he stabbed himself with by his father, and that the sword was made 
an image of his father. Yikes. So they tripled down at one point. Yikes. Yeah. Hmm. Um, interesting. Th- yeah, no, th- I mean that you can't really do that. That's not good. Yeah. I don't, I don't love it. No, not at all. Don't, don't love it. Wonder what ESPN thinks. I didn't realize this was a thing. How did, uh, how did Husker nation not tell me about this yet? I don't know. I probably didn't realize it cause I'm blocked by Pat McAfee. That's right. That's why I constantly update you on the goings on of the Pat McAfee show. Yeah. And it's on in our, there, I don't see any apologies. I think he needs some better friends. I don't see anybody reading off of a sheet of paper. <laughs> Cause here's the thing about, here's the thing about, I mean, there's lots of things about that show, but notably a few. Number one, what's AJ Hawk doing? Obviously not talking. Number two, there's nine people on that. There has to be at least nine people. They got a desk full of people. And then there's like a second tier desk mm-hmm. full of more people. That's the Dan and Patrick they, effect. And, but, but they all get to talk. Yeah. They, they all, they all talk, but really they all just sit there because Pat McAfee is saying something, the majority of the show or they're, you know, doing it, doing something stupid. Odd deal. Odd deal. Um, but yeah, this, that, that's not, uh, you're going to want to not do that. Boston Connor. Don't do that. Yeah. Probably, uh, in poor taste maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, finally we go to the game shows. I promised you a game show story. Former price is right. Producer Mike Richards, who by the way, just uh, on a side is also the former jeopardy executive producer who named himself host for one show and was then fired because you can't do that uh, has revealed what uh, the, what the price is right does. If contestants get a little too excited after winning that brand new car. Oh, uh, Richards, who is uh, he, he must be hawking a book or something. Cause he's, he's, ta- he's ta- talking to all these news outlets. Uh, he worked on the series uh, during the changeover from Bob Barker to Drew Carey. He told people magazine that production has a protocol in place. Uh, should the contestant pee their pants? You know, they got to be prepared for everything. Like every possible thing that's about to happen on that that's stage. That's not Big Ten protocol. <laughs> when I got there, they had a system in place in case someone peed their pants, he recalled. I never saw it happen, but there were curtains, a blow dryer, and a pair of sweats just in case, since we have to get on with the show. And although this protocol may sound silly, it's certainly better to be safe than sorry, given that accidents can happen during filming. Like last July, a man named Henry dislocated his shoulder after winning a game of bunkers. They do get. I'm not familiar with the game of bunkers. Abnormally excited yeah. on that show. I mean, it's part of the deal. Mm-hmm. I just don't know how they find that many crazy people to fill up one studio. It's pretty. It's pretty amazing. Well, it's a it's it's a crazy that gets activated once you're in that setting, right? Because yeah. That, that that person's you, not oh cake day cake day at the office all right cake day isn't it the crazier like do do they pick people I, live from the crowd i have heard that yes there are producers intermingled in the crowd that are like okay that person's really excited to be here they'll be good they that need person to be good on yeah, TV. yeah 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 well what if what if i went in there to a taping of the price is right mm-hmm. and i zagged and i was the most normal person there do you Just think i'd get stoic? on tv i don't do you I think at this point, they, I think it'd be funny if I was the calmest guy ever on Price is Right. I think it would be a great bit. That's what I'm doing. I, I just, I don't, just I don't think they'd buy in. They, they know their bit. They like their bit. They've done their bit for 60 plus years now, right? Change it up. No more Bob Barker. It's time to move on. Drew Carey. We got to talk about this guy. He, he doesn't look right. I know he's been through some things not, and I'm not making fun of that. Yeah. The hair, the the, the body. Well, we all the got clothes. our we all got our one taste of the year of Drew Carey on Thursday. <laughs> that's right, right before the game started. Oh, good, he's still on. He's still that, doing that's it. Nice. He's still slugging away. That's nice. Good for him. All right, thanks, Josh. Thank you, Connor. That is the odd news. I will come back the noon hour to follow on the Connor Happer Show on sixteen twenty the Zone. But as we mentioned, we're heading into the second weekend here, and you could say goodbye to your busted brackets because my friends from FanDuel. They let you bet on every game of the tournament, whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed. It's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. New customers right now get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. So listen to my friend AB, who just came on the show, and he said, 
eh, maybe like the under, so maybe like the Jays and the points, plus two and a half for the late game on Friday night. There's that. So many options for you. Just make sure your first $5 bet wins, and then you're locked in for $200 in bonus bets. All you have to do, sign up right now, fanduel.com slash happer, and you, along with me, can bet on college hoops all the way until they cut down the nets. 21 and over, present in Iowa. First online real money wager, only $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is now with travel bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. For the Jays, the Huskers, and even you Jayskers, we are 1620 The, the Zone. Zone. If you're unhappy with your job or employer and you've hit a dead end, it's time to start your new career as a delivery driver with Host Coffee. Our local family-owned business is growing, and we now have openings for delivery drivers and other positions starting at $22 an hour with full benefits. If you're interested, visit hostcoffee.net slash careers to connect with us. Host Coffee is always roasting something good for you. Welcome to RV Ready, brought to you by Leach Camper Sales in Council Bluffs. Looks like Mother Nature's on the line. I just had to call. We're getting things ready for everyone to head out camping again. Uh There's so many places to see and so many things to do, and I know Leach Camper Sales can help. You're right. People should go to leachcamper.com and check out the inventory. Oh, and the 2024s are all in. Head to leachcamper.com or stop by Leach Camper Sales in Council Bluffs. And don't forget, the coffee's always on. Of course it is. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle, unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze, and right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. Howdy, Greg Wagner joining you from the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. Time now for another Nebraska Outdoor Update. Say there's a lot to do this season in Nebraska's outdoors. There's always hiking in the state parks. There's bird watching. There's trout stream fishing action. There's scouting for that spring wild turkey hunting trip. And there's looking for shed deer antlers in your favorite woods. So there's no reason to be a couch potato, is there? No. Get outdoors and enjoy. Well, it's time. Time to get all your new permits and stamps for hunting, fishing, fur harvesting, and state parks. Time to check your motorboat registration for renewal. Time to make those cabin and camping reservations in the state parks if you haven't done that already. And time to go over all of your outdoor gear for spring and summer. Get more information on Nebraska's outdoor scene by going to the Game and Parks website, OutdoorNebraska.gov. And that'll wrap it up. I'm Greg Wagner with Nebraska Game and Parks. When it comes to concrete repair, Everlevel has some serious game. Coach Greg McDermott here to coach you on why you should choose Everlevel Concrete Repair. They've got the fundamentals to fix your cracked and uneven concrete and their products will give you the best defense against future damage. It's a fraction of the price compared to replacement, and their solutions come with a long-term transferable warranty. Working with Everlevel is a slam dunk. Call Everlevel Concrete Repair today for your free inspection. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZN Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. Josh, I got an email here that I'm going to need your help on. Okay. We were talking about game shows. And so I got an email from the Equitable Bank inbox from Eric. Hi, Eric. Eric said the following. I was lucky enough to be picked at the Bozo show 30 some years ago in Chicago. I'm going to stop there. What's that? Bozo the clown. He hosted a Saturday morning. 
I guess it would be classified as like a variety a show. variety show. Yeah. And, and so there were games that they they played. Yeah. Most famously, the grand prize game where you tried to throw a ping pong ball in six or seven buckets that were okay further away that, from each other. That as you tracks. Went. So stay with me here. So okay. one of our listeners, Eric, was selected for that show. He says, I didn't get to play the game. I did not get to play the game where you throw the ball into the bucket, but I did get to play a game where you had a big wooden fork and pushed a lemon across the room into a little bucket. Okay. The kid in front of me continuously told Bozo that he needed to go to the bathroom during a commercial break, and Bozo said there are no options <laughs> like a blow dryer and sweatpants and that he had to stay there and play the game. You can still watch the video and see the kid's pants start to dry and slowly make a big wet circle. The kid was so embarrassed, and they made him continue to play the game. I had to go behind him. Our team lost and won a cake from a local store and and a set of wire cleaners that you can play with. Wire cleaners? Like the wire wire cleaners, like the pipe cleaners, is that? Okay, I think okay. that's what he's talking about. What what ha- what's happening here? I just so pic- kid peed his pants. I just picture and Bozo, Bozo in the cloud said, "Hell no, you can't go to the bathroom." I just picture Bozo smoking a heater during the commercial break, going, "Yeah, tough break, kid." <laughs> he's yeah. He definitely had a thick accent. <laughs> Suck it up. We all got problems. You know, I remember that show airing on WGN. So in my head, it all took place in Chicago. Yeah, so. but he had he had to have an accent. Mm-hmm. He had to. <laughs> uh, speaking of game shows, mm-hmm. found this out this morning. So uh, last night we crowned our winner of The Bachelor. That's right. We did. Mm-hmm. My, my wife was very excited about it. She was Team Daisy. But Daisy did not win. I saw this. I read this. I heard about this. I woke up and I said, I did not take note of the Bachelor finale. Let me go to Mrs. Happer's Twitter account. She was still, she was, she seemed okay with the way it all went down. Okay. So that was good. She wasn't, she wasn't mad about it or anything like that. Um, But the winner of the Bachelor was Kelsey. Yeah. Right. She, she got engaged. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, to uh, Joey, who is the bat Joey Grazad Grazadi Grazadi. Oh, there's a name. Uh, that's a great name. His name, of course, is Joey with the last name Grazadi. Um, so Kelsey was the winner, and somebody noticed that when they panned to her and her family in during the live portion of last night's finale of The Bachelor that they recognized a semi-familiar face. And that was the face of former Nebraska football player, Matthew Anderson, who just so happens to be Kelsey Anderson's brother. She won the bachelor last night and her brother is former Nebraska football player, Matthew Anderson, who, if you he was in the class of 2020, he transferred out um, to, uh, I believe he plays it or played at uh, Louisiana, which is where they're from originally, that area. So there you go. There's your local connection to The Bachelor. Wow. How great is that? Matthew Anderson uh, came in to Nebraska in the class of, 2020 and i believe that would have been the same class let me let me pull it up here nebraska's class of oh no i'm sorry 2019 which would have been the same class as guys like wandale robinson uh nick henrich he was roommates they were roommates with bryce benhart oh and he i i I think somehow bryce benhart's still on the team right He's, he's he's still has some eligibility left. Probably is he going to be there this year? I don't know. I don't know. But there you go. There's your uh, there's your semi local Nebraska football connection to uh, pop culture in the in in the Bachelor last night. I mean, I'm sure you're very excited about this, Josh. I it's in it's in the graphic. It's in the lower third from rose ceremony to rose bowl. This is the thing that's gonna. 
get Nebraska to the Rose Bowl. That's I can't believe you made a graphic for this. Still, it, it was a topic on the sheet. Connor. It was it was a topic on the sheet. I write all my thoughts down I on like, the sheet. Like the producers of The Price is Right have to be prepared for every possible contingency. Even if the host pees his pants. That's right. I'm ready. <laughs> or if the producer upchucks. Upchucks in the middle of a show. I'll be ready. I see there were people uh, asking you as you were sitting behind the uh, the Turner cameras the this weekend in Omaha believe good friend dave fight asked what would it take to get you to recreate the now infamous josh is puking while random mike is calling scene from the <laughs> uh from the show sands about a year and a half ago i don't know it would have taken a lot i would have gotten tom's uh reese's socks dirty every night that man had different reese's socks on who oh tom mccarthy yeah he had reese's socks reese's yeah it's odd was he one night it was Reese's Pieces. He's got an endorsement deal with Reese's? I'm betting they just were like, here, have some socks. They were giving away socks. That is one of the things they yeah. do at March Madness. Yeah. They throw the socks out. That was them. really weird. I thought they're they... like, here, cheerleaders, take yeah. these socks and chuck them into the stands. People went crazy for those socks. That'd be a great gift. I would like March Madness socks. Yeah. They looked like nice, nice, thick, cushiony socks. Couple times the cheerleaders couldn't make it think... into the front row, and Gary and I yeah. had to. Here you go, <laughs> it's awesome back. Yeah, I just if if you could have just maybe like found a, a tall trash can that everybody could kind of see behind the table, and just snuck it over to you, and then you know, no, you didn't have to do the full fake puking. <laughs> you could have just said, "Oh, oh. <laughs> it's right there, it's right there." And that would have been an all-time show moment. <laughs> That would have been an all-time show. Moment. I told I I said this right. I I I knew in my heart of hearts that I could have gone viral very very easily, and I chose not to. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the NCAA tournament, one more story here before we take a break. Uh, so Jack Golke is in the news again. He is. So Thursday he smokes ten threes against Kentucky and sends them packing. Bye bye. Uh, Saturday he made probably what six or seven more. And went into overtime with Mr. Burns and NC State, lost in the NCAA tournament. Sunday, he gets a Buffalo, or Monday, he gets a Buffalo Wild Wings deal. Hey, I sent the game to overtime. You can check out the Buffalo Wild Wings overtime thing. Just go to this link on Twitter. Tuesday, or I guess it was probably Monday night, the story started to emerge about how Jack Gulkey wanted to keep the basketball from the game where he ripped 10 threes against Kentucky and they said, no, thank you. That's property of the national collegiate Ath athletics association. Now there's only so many of those bright orange basketballs, Josh. I know what people think about this. They're like, wow, the NCAA, they just cannot get anything right. But think about this, Josh, I'm going to take, I, I am going to both sides of this. I'm taking the NCAA side. Actually, I understand that you want the basketball and it's a great moment in NCAA tournament lore. And after, after, you know, a period of time, like you can get a commemorative. I mean, there's so many pictures of you. You have the moment, you have all the shoes that you wore. You have the uniform that you wore, like you have everything you could ever want. But Jack Wilkie decided that he wanted the game ball and he passed that along to, to the Oakland people. And to that, the NCAA said, no, you have so many people and teams that are operating in that arena, in that building. There's only two racks of basketballs. There's probably one extra rack. That's all. And there's every, everything is laid out. Every basketball has its own plan, right? This is on this rack. It's used during this time, and it's used by the, this group of people. I'm okay with the NCAA not giving them the ball. I'm fine with it. I don't think it's a weird... I, I, like, I don't think this is an example of the NCAA you know, of us having to go to the NCAA and be like, well, there goes the NCAA greed. They're at it again. They can't just give the kid the ball. Like, no, that's such an odd precedent. Then every March hero we could ever have, he gets a basketball for it that they played within the game. And then all of a sudden, by the end of the weekend, you're out of basketballs. No, I'd like to read from a website. My rebuttal. Go for it. Basically, March Madness is the NCAA's bread and butter in 2022, 2023. College Athletics Governing Body earned $1.28 billion in revenue. 
I'm on Dick's Sporting Goods website, and a basketball costs $100. Oh, Josh. You know, but you only have so many basketballs, right? You only have mm. so many. Yeah, and you should give them to the children. But then what happens if one guy makes one shot one, and he's like, I want the basketball? There, No, there's no. So what's the, it has to what's be a, the precedent? It what's has, the borderline? Tell Oakland, hey, we're going to take this to quote, a board of review. And then, yes, give the kid a basketball. So that way, when one kid is like, hey, I was a bench player for Drake and we went uh, one and done in the tournament, but I made a he's shot. He's not allowed to? He, no, absolutely not. So then we're then we're putting accomplishments up against other accomplishments. Yes. That's what sports is. I'm Team NCAA. No basketball for Jack Golke. He already has all of the memories, all of the pictures, all the TV time, all the NIL deals. He himself, I know the NCAA is worth $2 billion, but he himself is profiting massively off of his run in the NCAA tournament. Josh, can't the NCAA... <laughs> This is a bad precedent to set, by the way. Can't the NCAA make the argument that he is actually, his his profile is enhanced and he is profiting off of the NCAA and that the NCAA should take him to court and say, how, how can you do this? You are, you are making money off of the March Madness name. That's right, Connor. He's the, he's the NCAA's property. <laughs> That's right, Connor. Let's set that precedent. Good thing Jack Golke's white. <laughs> that is a good thing. I, I wouldn't have made that argument, probably. Uh, Bayamon writes in on YouTube. Hey, Bayamon. Connor Happer hates student-athletes. Got it? No, I love student-athletes. I love Jack Golke. I just don't think he needs a basketball. He's got plenty of basketballs. In three years. Why are we making a big deal about him and not having the basketball? In three years when he's a dentist. He could have that ball up on the shelf in his office. Instead, he'll just have a gigantic picture of him. That's better. Yeah, what's a picture? There, there is me. I was I I smoked 10 threes against Kentucky on national television. <laughs> Would you like to watch it? I have it queued up on YouTube. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> I got John Calipari fired. Yeah. Little old me. You don't need no basketball, Jack Goki. That's okay. <laughs> You got your chicken wings. We're up next on 1620 The Zone. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. Are you a delivery driver looking for a better job opportunity? Host Coffee is a local family-owned coffee, water, and vending company that has been in business since 1972. We are growing, and we now have openings for delivery drivers and other positions starting at $22 an hour with full benefits. If you're interested, visit hostcoffee.net slash careers to connect with us. Host Coffee is always roasting something good for you. Spring has arrived and Lanahan has everything you need to revitalize your landscape. Color perennials, shrubs, flowers, and fresh dug trees, all grown right here in Nebraska. Lanahan Nurseries, your homegrown headquarters since 1974. Hey, Omaha dog lovers, get ready for more wags and more fun. Hound HQ, your dog's favorite spot for daycare, boarding, and top-notch grooming is now open. At Hound HQ, there's plenty of space for a pup to sleep, play, and everything in between. Plus, our expert groomers are here to ensure your furry family member always looks fabulous. Join our pack on Facebook and Instagram at The Hound HQ or visit our website, thehoundhq.com, and sign up your dog today. Hound HQ. More wags, more fun. College basketball's biggest tournament is coming, and it's time to start betting like a pro with the world's largest sports book right at your fingertips. Circa Sports Iowa is sports betting the way it should be. High betting limits, tight money line splits, exceptional customer service, and more. Fund and bet like a pro anywhere, anytime. It's never been easier. Download your new bookie before all of the March action at CircaSports.com. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call one 800 238 6, 3, 3. Is your concrete cracked or uneven? Hey everyone, Coach Greg McDermott here to explain why you should choose Everlevel Concrete Repair. Many people think they need to replace broken concrete, but repairing it provides durable protection and comes at a fraction of the cost. 
Everlevel provides permanent repair solutions to fix your concrete and protect it against future damage. And it all comes with a long-term transferable warranty. They offer free inspections to walk you through the entire process. Call Everlevel Concrete Repair today. Oddly, he's interesting because he's so uninteresting. He is the most uninteresting man in the world. Hi, I'm Bob Berger. Don't settle for anyone more interesting. Let's get to work on your business and personal taxes, payroll and employee benefits, QuickBooks and retirement planning. Call me. Call Berger, Elliott, and Pritchard CPAs at 402-551-1919 or visit BEPCPA.com. The Zone Hotline is powered by 42 Degrees, the source. By your mom's house. Hi, we're the Goo Goo Dolls. We're fortunate that we can give our daughters everything they need to grow and learn. But not every child can focus on classes and play dates. Nearly 13 million kids in the U.S. face hunger. That's one in six. School lunch might be their only meal each day. And it's heartbreaking to imagine any child going to bed hungry. We're dreaming of a perfect day when kids can smile, play, and just be kids without worrying about where their next meal will come from. Feeding America is working to make that perfect day a reality. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste. That food is given to families and children in need. Being a kid should be about doing things that make an ordinary day extraordinary. Learning to play an instrument, building a sandcastle, hosting tea parties. Hunger should never be an obstacle to growing up. You can help end childhood hunger in your community by visiting feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. The back seat. Check the back seat. All right, come here. Check the back seat. Gets in your head, right? Good. Because every year, dozens of children are forgotten in the backseat of a car by a parent or caregiver. All never thought it could happen to them. But with changes in routines, distractions, or a sleeping child, it can happen to anyone. Parked cars get hot fast and can be deadly. So get it in your head. Check the back seat. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. Hey, Omaha, get ready to experience the excitement of the NCAA tournament games right here in our city. Ticketsforless.com is your go-to source for hassle-free tickets. With their transparent, upfront pricing and no added service fees at checkout, you'll know exactly what you're paying for from start to finish. Visit their Omaha office today at 145th and West Center Road or call now at 402-398-1999. As your local ticket experts, TFL is always there to help. Plus, score a special discount when you use my promo code, THEZONE, at checkout. Don't miss out. Get your tickets today at ticketsforless.com. Well, Josh, the NFL's gone soft again. Again? Yep. How many times can they do this? It's just going to keep getting softer and softer and softer until it disappears entirely. They're going to put them in skirts? Today, they outlawed the, or I guess it was yesterday. Sorry, we had sandwiches during the break. Shout out Picklemans. Hell yeah. Fire. Also shout out Melissa. Who's really always looking out for us. She really is. Yeah, it's unbelievable. We're locked in this room for four hours at a time. It's, it's, it's very, from the bottom of our hearts, it's very appreciated. Mm -hmm. Um, But the NFL is soft. And they have outlawed something that I will miss greatly and that happens all the time. The hip drop tackle. What was your your favorite hip drop tackle? The one that had Mark Andrews out for the entire season. (laughs) The one that broke his foot or whatever it was. Um yeah, I I I I think people are going a little bit overboard with the whole NFL is going soft thing. Always are. Although I will say this about the specific outlawing of this rule, um, it may be a little bit difficult to enforce, and it feels like a real judgment call, right? Yeah, and I, and I think that there's like think about a situation that comes up where we always do this with very specific scenarios when we change rules, um, as we did with like nil and like what happens when this happens, and You know, those situations went way beyond our wildest dreams. But, like, think about a situation where, you know, you're in a playoff game and a guy breaks a couple tackles and he's running down the sideline and, and, or toward the middle of the field, I should say. And 
the only choice the guy has to bring him down the safety who's gotten beat is the uh, is the hip drop tackle and it potentially saves a touchdown or saves a game or saves a super bowl like whatever it might be you're going to penalize him for it <laughs> mm-hmm. it seems a little odd right i always back in my day josh Ooh. it football was get the get the guy to the ground right get the now there are player safety initiatives. Um, you can't rip a guy's face off. That's illegal. I think that's good. I think that's a good thing. Good rule. Good line to draw. And then you can't uh, reach inside of his pad and grab the horse collar mm-hmm. and rip him down that way. Good rule. Although, I don't know how much we've seen guys get hurt on that specific play before. Um, it's certainly a dangerous play, but. It's all it's all dangerous. And now we can't attach ourselves to their hips and then just dead weight them to the ground because Mark Andrews got hurt one time. I just think they're, you know, if we if we go too far down this line, it, you start to wonder about all right, how how much further are we going to take this before it's really seriously not tackle football anymore? And like I I, I don't want to overreact. Um, because I think it's a play and it's a style that doesn't happen that often. Um, we didn't see a guy get hurt on it, but I do. I don't know. Here's- you tackle the guy, you tackle the guy, you know, and, and sometimes guys get hurt when you tackle guys. And that's kind of the, that's kind of part of the deal. Here's the biggest change for you. The football viewer, when you watch football with your group of friends, now that guy that yells holding on every play is going to yell <laughs> hip drop tackle. Yeah. Hip drop. That does that's a hip drop. That sucks. And that guy, kick that guy out. You don't have to sit there and be like and wait till the end of the game and then be like, oh, I'm never inviting Jeff to a game again. Yeah, it is kick definitely, him out right there and then. You're right about that too. It's definitely turned football watching into a much more tenuous experience. Like there's so many things of what uh-huh. that could have been, interpretations of rules. Is it a catch? Is it not a catch? Do we go to replay? Can we go to replay? Can we challenge this? Is that a hip drop tackle? Is it a face mask? Is it holding? Like, we're all that happens. We're at a point where we know enough to, like, okay, we know more about football than the generation that came before us or the generation that came before them. But also, in just generally in society, myself included, everyone thinks they're smarter than they actually are, not just about sports, but like everything. Uh, We also have this in the NFL today. Mm -hmm. The There's kickoffs, a lot of things, yeah. The kickoffs. We've been talking about doing something to this all year, or or for a long time now. Is kickoffs have become pretty much obsolete. Makes not much sense to take one out unless there's a you know unless there's a huge wind behind you or something like that. You feel it at the goal line, um, and everybody's slow. I, like there's really no reason to take it out anymore. Right. Um, so during the 2024 season, kickers will continue to kick from the 35 yard line, but the other 10 players on the kickoff team will line up at the receiving team's 40. And at least nine members of the team of the return team will line up in a quote setup zone between the 35 and 30 yard lines up to two returners can line up in a landing zone between the goal line and 20 yard line. So two returners, they can only be in a certain zone, and then the receiving team has to line up in a certain zone, and then the kicking team lines up on their spot, which is a whole lot closer to the return team. So you're taking out a lot of the, um, you know, the high velocity. Yeah, hits. yeah, the the crashing of bodies. Right. No one other than the kicker and returners can move until the ball hits the ground or hits a player inside the landing zone. Touchbacks will now be marked at the 30 and no fair catches will be allowed in the event. A team wants to attempt an onside kick. It will have to inform officials of its intent and then would be allowed to use the NFL's traditional onside kick formation. No surprise onside kicks will be allowed. Oh, remember that time in the Super Bowl? That's a bummer. I yeah. mean, that that's a real bummer. And yes, there's a lot about this. Oh. I mean, you're seeing all the graphics today on the kickoffs. 
So that was really complicated it's, to explain, but watching a clip of it, yes. it's what the XFL did. Yeah. La- last year, two years. When did the XFL play? I don't know. I don't either. But it's um it seems a little what would you call it, Josh? It seems a little it it's 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 kind of got like a kids kind of video game kind of vibe to yeah, it. Yeah, right? I mean like there's all these all these rules. No surprise onsides, anything like that. Like, I don't know. I'm I'm a little stuck because I guess I like that they did something because I would just flip to almost literally anything else for 10 minutes because it was commercial. Yeah. A nothing kickoff kick commercial. Off commercial. So I guess I credit them for doing something. I don't know that this is it. It might need a couple tweaks, a couple little, couple little ee, ee, tweaks. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see, I guess. You're obviously trying to take out the concussion mm-hmm. deal. What um, am I going to do? Not watch football? No. Which is, which is fine. But then the, you know, we actually potentially could get action on this play now, which is uh, fine. Uh, Detroit Lions coach Dan Campbell says he was in favor. Quote, you felt like that took a significant amount of plays out of the game, and those were from special teams, and you don't make it up really anywhere else. And so we put an emphasis on it, so I believe in it. On Monday, owners also approved three other rule changes, like I said, the hip drop tackle. That was unanimously passed. Allowing teams to receive a third challenge after one successful challenge. Previously, teams had had to be successful on two challenges to receive a third. This proposal was submitted by the Lions. And if there is a double foul during a down in which there is a change or changes of possession, including if one of the fouls is a post-possession foul by a team during a scrimmage kick, the team last gaining possession will keep the ball after enforcement for its foul, provided it did not foul before gaining the possession. That was a lot of words you said, Connor. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. I understood some of them. Yeah, I'm sure it'll come up at some point. But Packers, Niners, and Raiders said no to the new kickoff. Mm. Mm. Uh, text from the 402. Scott Frost hates this new kickoff rule. <laughs> How's sure he supposed does. to do his surprising onsides? He sure does. <laughs> All right. That's all the football talk we got today. I guess Troy Dannon's talking later, but that's after our show. We don't have to care about that today. Oh, good. Thank God. Uh, We'll come back with more. We'll touch on uh, some women's basketball from last night. There is a few things going on. And a bigger picture question about the sport. Coming up on the Connor Happer Show in 1620 The Zone. Mornings with Sharp and Handley. I wanted Nebraska to settle in, make some shots early, and then get into a moderate pace yeah. because they're not built. Like, start with their Air Jordans and then then slip on the uh, Skechers or the Hocus. Nebraska got sped up at the beginning of that game, and they got into, hey, let's just trade threes. And they did it to themselves early, and it became durable. Mornings with Sharp and Handley, weekdays 6 to 10. On 1620 The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620 The Zone. Another very chilly Tuesday with temperatures staying in the 30s throughout the day, and we're going to keep the breeze with us as well. Tomorrow, we start our temperatures in the upper teens, low 20s. Eventually, we warm into the 40s with a southeast breeze and partly cloudy skies. I'm meteorologist Luke Vickery. KETV Newswatch 7. Equitable Bank. We take banking personally. EquitableOnline.com. You know what mentality can help you with? Low energy, motivation, weight gain, muscle loss, fatigue, tired all the time, feeling anxious, moody, irritability, impatience, anxiety, and depression. Mentality can help you with their board-certified physicians and their testosterone treatments that can take care of you and get you back in the game. You can regain normal function and restore your ability to perform normally at all levels just by mentality. Set up an appointment today. Go to lowtusa.com. Get back in the game. Don't sit on the sidelines and let mentality lead the way. Not too long ago, I heard Jensen Tire and Auto guarantees if you find a tire they carry advertised by a local competitor at a lower price, they'll match it. 
I'm always looking for a great deal, so I thought I'd see for myself. Try as I might, I couldn't find a better price than at Jensen. So I bought my tires there, and guess what? They had the tires I wanted at the right price, and they had me in and out in no time. Sure, I'll always be on the lookout for a great deal, and if I happen to find one, I'm bringing it to Jensen, because I know they'll match it. Plus, I'll get their amazing customer service. Hi, I'm Matt Jensen, president of Jensen Tire Auto, inviting you to experience the difference at our locally owned and family owned company. Check us out at JensenTireAuto.com today. Get ready for warm weather driving with early spring tire deals at Jensen. Save up to $200 on Goodyear, Cooper, General, Continental, Maxxis, and Kelly tires. Check out Jensen's early spring tire deals at JensenTireAuto.com today. It's the most time-honored tradition to start the weekend, grabbing a cold one from a local Nebraska brewery. Let's be real here. It's cold outside, and you don't want to drink the same boring beer as those Hawkeye fans. Drink Nebraska brewed beer, cider, or seltzers instead. Each week, we're putting the spotlight on a unique Nebraska brewery with One Beer Friday. Share your brew on social media with the hashtag One Beer Friday, and you'll be entered to win a $25 gift card to a local Nebraska brewery. Nebraska is the good life with great beer. Click Nebraska.beer to learn more. What does Saul's loan on? Almost everything, like jewelry, gold chains, bracelets, earrings, wedding rings, and high-end watches, guns, electronics, $10 to $50,000, super fast and easy with no credit check. Saul's loan's on almost everything. Maverick Baseball and Softball are underway, and single-game tickets are on sale now. This Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, the weather is perfect as Maverick Baseball takes on 2023 CWS qualifier Oral Roberts at Tal Anderson Field. Omaha Softball is on a 15-game win streak and plays Creighton on April 2nd, and Maverick Baseball takes on Creighton on April 9th. Don't miss these classic matchups at Maverick Park. Get your tickets now by calling 402-554-MAVS or by going to omavs.com slash ticks. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential. But finding those people can be a major hassle. Unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. When it comes to concrete repair, Everlevel has some serious game. Coach Greg McDermott here to coach you on why you should choose Everlevel Concrete Repair. They've got the fundamentals to fix your cracked and uneven concrete, and their products will give you the best defense against future damage. It's a fraction of the price compared to replacement, and their solutions come with a long-term transferable warranty. Working with Everlevel is a slam dunk. Call Everlevel Concrete Repair today for your free inspection. Uh, how about this one, too, if you're interested in uh, the transfer portal going on right now? Love the portal. By the way, uh, I saw another thing that popped up during that last segment. So Richard Patino. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I, I ate a wing during the break and I forgot. Now you're all fired up. Uh, Richard Patino is in the mix for the Louisville job. That's right. Richard Patino. You, you can't. You can't. <laughs> you might it's like want reverse to. nepotism. Uh huh. You you just literally can't do it. I know you want to. I know someone in the room is probably like, "Hey guys, I got a great idea. They won't let us have Rick." <laughs> but got Richie. What if I told you he had a son? Uh, also in the portal. Um. So, Will Kyle went in the portal yesterday. That's right. Uh, also, we have another Jack. South Dakota State, uh, Zeke Mayo, who uh, was a pretty dang good player this year. He'll be 
entering the portal while declaring for the 2024 NBA draft. It's amazing. Like, and that's just life at the low major level. And for a program like South Dakota State, who, you know, they, they're more times than not, they find themselves in the NCAA tournament because they've won the Summit League. Mm-hmm. It's just if if they've developed to a point where by their junior year, by their third year or fourth year in the program, um, they they become a really good player, an all-conference type of player, like they're going to leave. They They will leave. They will go play at a high major school there's, the next year. They will follow the Baylor Shireman do. plan. Yeah, there's very little you can do to keep them. Yep. It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's hard. And by the way, you know, Baylor, um, Baylor is so much better for coming back that second year at Creighton than he would, you know, like, Obviously, he's he's going to be remembered differently because of the tournament success. But he had an all conference year this year, like unanimous first team All Big East. It doesn't look and feel the same for him if he's not here for his second year, and all of that is just familiarity with the league. So, like that's also a good lesson for people. Even even though the the broader the broader lesson is ah, oh, you can go to South Dakota State for three years and then go play you know, at Creighton or in and be an all conference type of player, but that doesn't happen. You know, Baylor was a good player last year for Creighton, but like this year doesn't happen for him without his first year at Creighton. So it's a good lesson also in development, like what he did to his body this off season and how he got himself prepared for this season. And then to actually have it all play out and then have the tournament sex success to go along with it. I mean, that's a, that's not only a like, ah, oh, this is a cool low major success story. It's also a good Creighton developmental story as well. And a good lesson to say, sometimes you just need time. You know, <laughs> like so, sometimes you just need time at a place with the same people and around a league that you're familiar with and that you've become adjusted to as well. He was very, he was quite sporadic last year. Right. We, he he got most of the slings and arrows for last year's Creighton team f- for that entire team. Like he 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 got all of them, mm-hmm. and so that was because of his volatility. Right? We had discussions about him. I remember Josh on the show. Like you kind of just have to take the good with the bad from him, you know, because the good is so good. This year, it's just been good the whole time. He's been very consistent in that regard. That you know, and you feel comfortable with the with the ball in his hands when there's nine seconds left in uh, in regulation with your life on the line in the NCAA tournament. One shot for your life. Yep, felt fine with that. So it's a good it's a good lesson either way. Anyway, lots of portaling going on out there. I should check the verbal commits and see how many uh, people are in there in the moment. I would imagine it's more than a thousand. I don't uh, know if you heard. I did over a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> That's the portal talking. Yeah. I don't know if you heard about this. I did uh got a thousand people in there. <laughs> Stupid movie. I love it. Great women's team lost last night. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of development, you know. So that group. So the the starters with Brake, Jensen, Mogensen, Molly, Ronsick. And then also you have uh, Jamie Horan. They can all come back next year, <laughs> which is horrifying, right? They're assassins. I do wonder, like, I, I wonder what they'll, um, I wonder if that's a group decision or it's a, that's a player by player decision. Like, I wonder how that'll go going into next year. But I also wonder like what their, what their, what their ceiling is and, like they're going to be in the NCAA tournament. They're probably going to win like 27 games next year. It's just like, what kind of matchup do you get in the NCAA tournament? Do you want to, do, do you feel hungry enough to all come together and run it back again? And um, just to try and get to the second weekend one more time or the elite eight one more time or the final four or whatever it is. And maybe that's worth it, but man, what a run for that group. Even if this is the last we see of it in its form right now. Yeah, they had ten point lead at. Uh, I think it was actually an eight point lead at halftime, but uh, it was it was at ten during several points of the game. Ah, just couldn't hang on, couldn't hit shots late. UCLA uh, looked like they were playing some pretty tough D. Yeah, on them. Yep. Ah, just 
I would like to see them run it's, it back. It did, it did seem for a while as if they were going to get them last yeah. night. Yeah. Like, can you rattle off another 25 plus win season and avoid the right teams in the bracket? I mean, I know the women's bracket isn't much for upsets, but can you avoid the right teams and, and survive as long as you can? It's kind of what it all comes down to. Mm-hmm. Um, elsewhere in the women's game last night, Caitlin Clark survives. Literally, yeah. Would you like me to take a small mini victory lap on this, Josh? Uh, I'm I'm pro anyone in the show taking a victory lap whenever possible. Look, so please. She survived last night, and what did what did I say about Iowa? I said they're definitely not going to make the final four. Mm-hmm. I almost said they're not going to make the second weekend. That almost didn't happen last night. They won by like 150 in their first game against Holy Cross. But they struggled last night against West Virginia, and they needed a little bit of help from various entities. Oh, like like Caitlin Clark and the players on the floor? Well, Caitlin Clark, yes, they needed her to, to I, don't, I don't know what's going on with her. She's been even more demonstrative in her last two games, both in the NCAA tournament here. I said after the first game, oh, it's all getting to her. She's she, there. Might there, be a little bit of that. Josh. There's a lot of pressure on her. Yeah. And, well, I mean, entire entire economies, yes. entire TV networks will fail. Yeah. Without Caitlin Clark in the Final Four. Absolutely. I mean, they're not going anywhere, but um, it would certainly be a big blow to the plans for the Final Four if Caitlin Clark isn't there, and she might not be. And so I think they're they're probably on edge a little bit. And now they're not going to be at Carver Hawkeye Arena in the Sweet 16 and Elite Eight rounds. Everybody will either be in Albany or Portland. I know that's where you want to go next, but it is. We it is, Josh. What what are we what are we doing? I don't know. Is this a big deal tournament or is it not? So they went a couple years ago. It's 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 more formal than it used to be. It is. Right? We went to the March Madness thing. They're actually allowing them uh-huh. to use the March Madness. Um, they're and, giving them like water and food during the breaks. Like, now you can put the regionals wherever you want the sweet 16 elite eight rounds, wherever you want, because whatever smaller, smaller, big city, I guess is for the lack of a better phrase, mm-hmm. smaller, big city will get that event. We'll embrace it. You know, if Lincoln got it, which they did one year, they would love it. Right. If, if you know, Albany, it's a good place for it. Portland, it's a good place for it. Why was there only two? I have no idea. They're doing two regions yeah. at one site twice. I and I I get the okay. If we put it in Wichita, is anyone in Wichita going to come out? Like this Albany and Stores. I imagine that's a pretty drivable distance for the residents of Stores, Connecticut, the bustling hub that is Stores, Connecticut. And then there was also this kind of uh, this conversation that was started to take a little bit more. You know, front facing position last night, which was has the women's game outgrown campus sites for the first two rounds of the tournament? We're currently on the women's side, if you're unfamiliar. Um, you know, Iowa's Iowa's a one seed and they will get to host they host their first two games, round of sixty four and round of thirty two, at their place. Each of the top four seeds, so each of the top sixteen teams in the tournament get to host at their building for the first two games of the NCAA tournament before they move on to the regional rounds. That's the way it's been in the, in the, in the women's game. Um, But a question has now been raised. Seems odd. It seems like a definitive advantage for those teams, Mm -hmm. (laughs) which I mean, Nebraska going out to Corvallis, Creighton going out to LA. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so, I get that if you put like a first round game in Detroit, like no one's going to come out and this is all designed to make money, but, and I don't know if the field is really like, Hey, what would have happened if Fairfield beat Indiana in the first round? Like it, I, it's not necessarily great. I don't know. Those power teams don't advance. I don't know that it's about that as much as like, I think we try to make it about like the student athlete experience um 
and there were people that were saying last night, like, it is a cool experience to play at uh, Oregon State or, or or whatever it might be. It, like, it is, th- that part of it is different, and it is unique, and it is embraced, and especially when you're playing, you know, when you're playing the host team. Creighton played a wooden arena last night. Like, that's cool. It, it is cool. Wooden court, I guess, or, but, or whatever. I mean, we've seen enough. Josh, you were you were at the event over the weekend. I've been at several of them now over the years. Like, that is special. That is so special. Yeah. And no, you don't have to put it in that big of a city, you know. Right. But I do think there's really something too. And and and, and I think I was probably against the idea of this at first, but it's become very uniform and very kind of corporate looking, where all the courts. Are, are kind of the same. I like that now. I feel like that's a kind of charm of the tournament. And there is a uniformity about the entire thing. And it feels bigger. It feels, um, it, I, I guess it just feels mm-hmm. bigger. It feels yeah. brighter. It, it's not right? a thing that I'm overly concerned it, about. It, anymore. it doesn't feel like we've, we've like shoehorned a tournament into, uh, you know, Corvallis, Oregon or Omaha, Nebraska or something like that. It feels like, oh, these places have supported it and the NCAA has supported it. Like it's all it's it's about the money, right? So for the NCAA to come out and say, no, we'll rent out the arenas, we'll play them at these sites, we'll have the staffs, we'll buy the courts, we'll get everything. I think that would be a major message set to the women's game. And I I, I don't know that it's outgrown it, Josh, but I do think it would be a nice gesture from the NCAA to say, yes, we're going to do this for you. And we're going to make your tournament almost exactly like the men's mm-hmm. side. I, I think that'd be cool. I, I think that'd be a nice gesture. And I think it'd be warranted at this point, um, you know, because of the, because of the increased popularity of the sport. And you would not have incidents like the Utah team having to move hotels in the middle of the night yeah. because the Gonzaga fans got a little unruly. Yeah. Yikes. To say the least. It was right. far worse than unruly, but I think you could do it. And I, yeah. I, I do think it's probably time. I, I, I think we're probably there. Um I I still think if you put it, you know, anywhere, like a sixteen's not gonna be a one. Like your the teams that you kind of want to insulate as a as a ratings driver. Still make it through the first weekend. Yeah. I mean. I mean, they, they don't need those home court. I mean, Iowa obviously has one. They don't. I mean, maybe maybe they did need it last night. I would have been curious what would have happened. <laughs> but you get to play it a little bit more true. And, uh-huh. and um, you know, a lot of times what happens to the top teams, actually, Josh, to, to, to the other side of your point, what happens to the teams that are favored is that the places where the cities in which these games are being located, they will adopt the underdog they will mm-hmm. adopt the cinderella whatever it is maybe it would result in a little bit more of that sure. maybe it would result in i mean we don't we, we never hear about cinderella runs on the women's side well i was just looking that up uh there was only if i'm looking at this bracket correctly there was one seed upset in the opening round crazy one middle tennessee over louisville and 11 <laughs> over a six wow that's insane now this is a tournament that is that that it's generally a low number of upsets. That's even a low number. That's for this insane. Tournament. Yeah, I mean they have first four thirty two games, games and only one was an upset. Right. <laughs> like how how many times did that happened in the men's game in the first round? Uh, I mean we could look it up real quick. A I, lot. I, probably in the neighborhood of ten would be my guess. Somewhere around there. Uh, while you're looking that up, uh, I mean, there's one quadrant has a one, two, three, four left. One quadrant has a one, two, three, four left. One quadrant has a one, five, three, seven left after Duke beat Ohio State, which is, you could maybe call that the biggest upset of the tournament. And then the Iowa bracket is one, two, three, five. Hmm. Iowa, Colorado coming up. Oh, who do I root for there? <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Might be hard. <laughs> Eight, nine, okay, I'm, I'm in the process of counting. I'm at 10. I am at 11. There was 11. Round of 64, there was 11 seed upsets. So mm-hmm. 11 out of the 32 games. Good guess by me. Here, here's, an interesting, lap. here's an interesting tweet from Tank. Hi, Tank. Uh, play the women's games at the same sites as the men's, just on the opposite days. 
feels like it'd be a lot. It, it'd be a lot of stress on the cities and the hotels and the like. It, it, I think if you could logistically do it, that might be the way to do it. It's a that that's those a are, lot. To those handle. are big. Those are big cities, though. In the first round, I I do kind of think you need them in smaller cities, like maybe like an Oklahoma City, or I mean, even smaller than that. Yeah. Uh, we get this email from uh, John. Hi, John. It says the crowds will be nowhere as big for the first two rounds of the women's tournament if they move them off campus. If that isn't a concern, then by all means move them off site. But the atmosphere is going to be much different. I mean, that's that's kind of the point that we're making. Like maybe the game is at the point where the neutral court sites don't have to be that bad. And remember what they do for the women's tournament. Or, or for the men's tournament, where they will place the one seeds at very close locations to where you're at, so your fans can make it easier True. to travel. So, like South Carolina, who's you know one seed, is going to be playing in Charlotte or Raleigh or uh, Charleston or whatever it might be in the first round. They'll fan, their fans will still go; they'll still be there. Jacksonville, right? Some, I don't know something like that. Um, and you know. Maybe it's not so much about the attendance of them as much as it is about a TV product, mm -hmm. which that it is definitely what's happening in the rest of the sports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Something to chew on maybe a little bit, but maybe maybe we have reached that point. All right. Uh, we will return. Jacob Bigelow will join on the other side. We will ask him about Richard Patino emerging as a top candidate for the Louisville job. Good. Not just in the mix emerged as a top candidate. The next step to this is he's been hired. Remember? This is exciting. Uh, we'll come back with Jacob next on the Connor Happer Show on 1620 The Zone, but say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seat, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. Take a look at what we have coming up this weekend. No, well, there might not be much room for Mr. Cinderella anymore, but that is where you can get busy. Some real tight splits on those games. So look into it, see what you like. Creighton's plus two and a half. I'm just saying, might get back to their second, their second uh, final regional, you know, in the last two years. I'd look into it. If I were you, and if you win that bet, it's $200 in bonus bets for you in the FanDuel Sportsbook. 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines, and you can even pick who's going to win it all. FanDuel.com slash Happer bet on college hoops all the way until the end, until they cut the nets down. FanDuel.com slash Happer. 21 and over present in Iowa. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is now withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gilling problem call 1 800 bets off. Now live on Twitch, YouTube, and 1620thezone.com. Lindley Clothing in Omaha has been the premier provider of men's fashion for over 88 years, from suits to jeans with great brands like Jack Victor, Bugatti, Peter Millar. Your father was a customer. You're a customer. Your son is a customer, and now they're looking for the latest sportswear to tailored clothing. Lindley Clothing has you covered. They will help you get the look that you need with their selection and top-notch customer service. You walk in the door, and there's John and Marlene and the entire Lindley Clothing team with a great smile on their face, and they're to help you. 132nd and West Dodge in Linden Market to pick up the latest styles and enjoy easy access shopping. It's the most time-honored tradition to start the weekend. Grabbing a cold one from a local Nebraska brewery. Let's be real here. It's cold outside and you don't want to drink the same boring beer as those Hawkeye fans. Drink Nebraska brewed beer, cider, or seltzers instead. Each week we're putting the spotlight on a unique Nebraska brewery with One Beer Friday. Share your brew on social media with the hashtag One Beer Friday and you'll be entered to win a $25 gift card to a local Nebraska brewery. Nebraska is the good life with great beer. Click Nebraska.beer to learn more. Hi, I'm Kamiko, the founder of Miko's Hot Chicken. When we started our family restaurant, we were also raising a family. But let me tell you, it wasn't easy. Our Chase Inc. car was there to reward us on all of our business needs. Now we have a thriving location, and we're hungry for more. With the Chase Inc. Business Unlimited card, you can earn unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase, so your business can go from here to possible. Chase for business. Make more with yours. Real business owners compensated for their participation. Cards issued by JPMorgan Chase Bank and a member FDIC. Subject to credit approval. Terms apply. 
I can't believe tax season is here already. But look at all this info I have to enter. Phil's small accounting firm is growing in numbers. Why didn't I take that typing class in high school? A data entry specialist could really help him in a crunch. I got blisters on my fingers. Indeed can help him hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. You can schedule and conduct virtual interviews all from your employer dashboard. Visit indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramp's software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash sports. Ramp.com slash sports. R-A-M-P dot com slash sports. Cards issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. What moves you? Whether it's running a race or playing with your grandkids. Orthopedic specialists at CHI Health are dedicated to helping you keep life moving. We offer the latest surgical and non-surgical treatments. So you have options for painful shoulders, knees, hips, and every joint in between. Don't let joint pain put life on pause. Count on our team of orthopedic specialists to begin your journey back to what moves you today. Hi, this is Stacy McGilligan, Director of Sales for NRG Media Omaha. NRG Media is looking for an accomplished bilingual new business development salesperson who wants to take their success and skills to the next level. Is this you? Our multimedia account executives work with local businesses to create marketing plans to help them get more customers. On air, digital, on site, audio, video, it's all part of what you could sell. A sales career with NRG Media lets you make a real difference in our community. Get more info and apply online at nrgmedia.com. NRG Media is an equal opportunity employer. Tickets for less. Best seats, best prices, no service fees. Shop ticketsforless.com. KOZ and Bellevue, Omaha, Council Bluffs. This is 1620 The Zone. He's heating up. That's the country song, right? Remember when? Thank you. Chica Bigelow. Yeah, well, yeah if I, when, whenever my open is concocted, throw that in there. He's on fire! Chica Bigelow, Huskers Illustrated, on the Connor Happer Show, on 1620, The Zone. Boom shakalaka! All right, back from uh, Graceland is Jacob Bigelow, Huskers Illustrated, and the Stretch Big Podcast. Jacob, good afternoon. How are you, my friend? I am okay. Um, I will say this. I, I've always wondered how the Elvis Presley estate is still making so much money to this day. And then I looked up that cheapest ticket to go to Graceland is $85. Whoa. Just to go? Yes. <laughs> is there like activities inside there? Is there like a Ferris wheel or something? I forget. I forget the. <laughs> I forget the the list. I looked it. I looked into it for the bit, honestly. After how last week went. Yeah. And uh, then the cheap. Then the the cheapest package because uh, they had all sorts of different like packages. Like one, you can see Elvis's hangar and see all his planes and cars. And oh. Blah, 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 blah. And, like the cheapest and like the cheapest one was eighty five dollars. And I'm like, well, hmm. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I probably would have passed too, but I don't know. The bit the bit would have really carried it a long way if, if you would have been able to get it done. Um That is that is true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. You I think you probably made a made a sound choice, but I really would have liked to see the pictures from it, to be to be completely honest with you. But that's okay. Uh we'll talk about the rest of your uh the rest of your short stay in Memphis as we, uh, as we go along here with Jacob Bigelow. Um, so we, we thought going into the tournament when we talked about it last week, when we had the draw, uh, and I think the general consensus was that we talked about this on your pod and on the show, like, yeah, I kind of, I, I kind of like the draw. We knew 
that Texas A&M was athletic and that would give Nebraska, um, you know, its own set of problems. And I think we were worried about the offensive rebounding stuff. Like did that, did the take of like, that was a good matchup for Nebraska age poorly or did Nebraska just not play well enough? Oh, it aged like milk in the Sahara desert. Um, that was a pretty, um, bad observation looking at it at first. Um, kind of as I went on, uh, later in the week, like watch more, more films, like some, you know, some like clips. I was just like, I don't know if Nebraska can guard this team. Um, and you know, and it's unfortunate for them because, you know, we heard throughout the season, I've said it multiple times on, on these airwaves that, you know, Fred Hoiberg hammered home that, he wanted, he knew that his, that team needed defense to be their constant. And in the last two games of their season, it sure as hell wasn't. Um, and in the, you know, the Illinois game and the Texas A&M game, they were eerily similar. And, you know, they, it, it was a matchup from hell. I mean, they scored 83 points and still lost by double digits. But I mean, there's a, there's a lot that goes into it. I mean, it's, it's a combination of a lot of things. And what it comes down to more than anything is that, you know, that's, that's just the NCAA tournament. Like it's, it's yeah. so so dependent on matchups and your draw and, and momentum and also there's all these things that go into it. And if you have one bad night or you play a team that just has flames shooting out of you know, where where the sun don't shine mm-hmm. and they're shooting like the 2016 Golden State Warriors, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. What unfortunately, do you, what do you think happened to them defensively over those? last two games there, especially second half against Illinois um, into the first half of Texas A&M. I mean, they just don't like, I mean, it's a personnel thing in my opinion. It's I think that's partly thing. it. I agree. It's, it's an athleticism thing. I mean, I mean, they got, I mean, they don't have anyone who they can say, Hey, turn Shannon juniors on a heater. Go get him. Like they don't have the, or Wade Taylor is torching you go pick him up full court. Like there's not like, there's not a guy, you know, on that roster who is, you know, I mean, who's, you know, a stout, you know, on ball defender. They're not the most laterally quick by any means. I mean, it's, it's, I think more than anything, it's, it's a personnel thing and it's, you know, that I'm sure it'll be addressed plenty over the next you know month or two in the, in the portal with, you know, all the off season stuff. And, you know, there's, there was no time to breathe. I mean, Fred said it yep. said as much after the game. You usually have time to breathe after these kind of losses and the end of the season, but portal's open and you got to get down to business. The regret, I think, and I talked a little bit about this yesterday. The if, if I don't know if it's a regret, but maybe the lesson from the game because like we knew what they were and we knew what they weren't. What they weren't is um, the 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 dudes team, the athletic, you know. Uh-huh. Um, guys that were going to be able to guard people and and but they had made do all year with with effort and 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 some timely shooting and hot shooting at the right times as well like they had made it work and it was ended up being a pretty good formula at the end of the year but i think that the kind of lesson from it was i i, I felt like they kind of let things get sped up on them a little bit and, uh-huh. and you know, that can happen when the team's not, the team across from me isn't missing anything. But I just felt like they maybe, maybe a little too willingly fell into that trap. I would have liked to see them just like play well, just as I would have liked to see them play well against Creighton and just to see what would have happened in that game. Like th- that's, I guess, the kind of regret from, from uh, Friday night. Yeah, I mean that's that's a part of it. I mean, you've only got one guy on your roster who's been on a stage like that before in the NCAA tournament. I mean, NCAA tournament games they're different than any game you play all year. The prep is so different. The stage, the the open practice at the arena the day before the games, the you're, you're in front of the media so much. I mean, there's a ton that goes into it, and that is completely different. And you know, as corny and cliche as it is, with you know all the guys that have the eligibility. For next year, that's what you tell them all off season is remember that feeling. Remember that feeling. Yep. Remember what you know. Remember you know the, the emotion that was in the locker room, and you carry that with you, and you do what you can to you know build from it, and and you know ho- hope to not be in the same position again next year. That experience and, uh, will definitely help them in the long run. Absolutely, I completely and totally agree. Uh, what else did you think of? Uh, I mean, w- one thing that was obviously apparent from from me sitting there watching all the coverage from. 
from you got from you and others in, in Memphis was um, the, the 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 hunger for the Nebraska fan base. Um, the the amount of people that traveled there. Every picture I saw was just people painted in uh, in red. And the first you know six eight minutes of that game was like this like sweet release. They were making everything uh-huh. like what is going on. Um, that that part of it was was really cool. Like, what did you take away from the fan base's involvement in going to the NCAA tournament from the, uh, for the first time in 10 years? Oh, I mean, it was, it was crazy. I mean, it, it was, it was, you know, I, I was just, you know, seeing, I mean, the first two games in the building that day, there were more Nebraska fans there than Baylor fans, Clemson fans, New Mexico fans, whatever, whoever was playing. I mean, it was, it was mostly Nebraska fans walking around the concourse. Um, I didn't partake in any of the, the festivities on Beale Street, but it sounds like the night before on Beale Street was quite the party. I mean, it, and all the you know you're seeing pictures, you know, of, of, of all the bars being shoulder to shoulder with Husker fans. I mean, there's no other way to put it aside from just a hunger. And you know, people, you know, people who probably were you know did did what I did ten years ago and drove down to San Antonio and you know where I'd waited so long to be back there. I mean the. The Nebraska basketball diehards are forever loyal you know, through thick and thin. And they, you know, and I, I completely agree too. I mean, those first 10 minutes felt like the sweet release of holy bleep. Like, <laughs> yeah. we can, we can, we can do, we can do, we're here. We can do this. This is, this is incredible. And then just unfortunately, basketball nature took its course for the rest of that game. Hey, uh, Jacob, I don't know if you were listening. So we'll, we'll morph this into a conversation about, um, you know, Nebraska basketball and what to expect, I guess, going forward. We always reset it around this time of year. Um, I, I think you were listening during our blind coach resume segment earlier, which mm-hmm. I had a lot of fun putting together. I, I'll, I'm going to reread. I'm going to reread the Fran McCaffrey one. And mm-hmm. We're just, I'm, I'm going to make sure everybody is, is sure on, on what this is. And I want to see what you think about it as well. So over the last 10 NCAA tournaments, the last 10 tournaments we've played, he's made it to the tournament, uh, seven times, seven out of 10 years, but he's never gotten to the sweet 16 and they've won four games. Um, and then they had three years where they didn't make the tournament, two of which they went to the NIT, including this past season like uh-huh. that's is that a reasonable expectation for nebraska basketball in a 10-year stretch it, pretty close i mean uh, i know it's crazy to think about considering they haven't you know they've gone twice in the last 30 yeah you know but like, yeah. oh yeah 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 i mean i mean the the time before this one i was 16 years old and the time before that i was nine months old when nebraska you know their last couple NCAA tournament trips but i mean and there's and and you know on the surface looking at that like yeah, you you'd love that from a Nebraska perspective I mean, it's where it's where you look into what went into some of those Iowa seasons where the Fran fatigue is set in in Iowa City but you know the the, the year they ran through the Big Ten tournament the year they had Luca Garza who was the national player of the year and they still didn't make the second weekend that's where all the Fran fatigue comes from but to have if you're if you're looking at it from the Nebraska perspective I mean I I said that as much on social media on Friday. You always want a seat on the ride. You don't want to miss the height requirement. No doubt. You don't want to get told you have to sit this one out. You you want a seat on it, regardless of, regardless of where it ends. You know when it gets to February and March, you want to be in the discussion. You want to be a part of it. And yeah, that's how it. And that's just how I say. It. You always want to be on the ride. Yeah, a lot of these a, a lot of these discussions, Jacob, are really hard to have with Nebraska because their lack of tournament appearances and like. So we, we had one person that commented in that said, I would, I would trade 25 years of not making the tournament for one single win. And I said, I, I don't know. I, I don't think you would, <laughs> but like, I don't, I don't, I don't think you would. So it's really hard because the perspective kind of isn't there, but I don't think it's that like out of the, out of the blue, especially what they've done this year and how Fred's, you know, it feels like there's some, sustainability there like it's not that crazy uh-huh. to say they could go out a, to three out of five tournaments or something like that but i know we say that every year we yeah i mean it's it's become ad nauseum in some ways but i mean and i and i'll talk about this on my pod this week like looking back at this season i mean they overachieved they, they over yeah that's a good they thing were, they were they were greater than the sum of their parts by far 
you could look at their roster from top to bottom and and say that they had a group of you know mid major all stars and they finished third in the Big Ten and they made the and they made the NCAA tournament and you know it you know basketball is a make shot game and they were a make shot team for most of the year if the shots were going in they had a great chance the games where they weren't those were the games that turned ugly and it just um, you know it there's it's obviously you know Fred has proof of concept you know with this season the jump that they made from last year to this year even from two years ago to last year you know the trajectory is is going up and you know we'll we'll obviously see how it plays out with with roster construction and you know they'll they'll, they'll be in a pretty good spot you know next year this this didn't feel fluky by any stretch yeah some um there's some openings on that roster at the moment your your thoughts on the early goings in and out of the portal for Nebraska was certainly more surprised with uh, the Eli Rice news, but I guess you know I, I was later told yesterday that that had been a, a thing for a couple weeks. Um, you know the Ramel Lloyd thing. I mean Noah Vedral and Brant Banks played more games in Nebraska basketball jerseys than than uh, Ramel Lloyd did, which <laughs> is crazy to think about, considering how important that felt. You know when he reaffirmed his commitment to Nebraska. You know coming out of Sierra Canyon, just never really worked out for him, but. Um, you know, no, now they've got the three open scholarships. Uh, their names, uh, their name has been listed quite a bit. Reaching out to guys who are in the portal already, and there will be plenty more in as you know more team seasons come to a close. The rest of this, the end of this week, and you know it'll portal combat never stops. Portal combat, uh, one of the best. Um, we we have we have some really good stuff on the coaching carousel front today, and so I have to get your 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 quick thought on Mm -hmm. the emergence of Richard Patino seemingly being the front runner for the Louisville job at this point. That's right. Richard Patino to Louisville potentially. I mean, it's it's quite possible. It's quite possibly the funniest outcome. Uh, (laughs) It is. It is. I mean, this is that search is starting to mirror the UCLA search a couple years ago where they wound up with Mick Cronin and people are like, what? Mm, uh, good one. He was like their he was like their seventh or eighth choice. Uh, people like to forget that John Calipari's ridiculous contract is because UCLA just reached out and said, "Hey, John, what do you think?" And they're like, "Lifetime contract. Here you go." Um, so I mean, it's starting to eerily resemble you know that. But I'm sure that uh, people down there it would be pretty a pretty mixed bag. People saying, "Why Richard?" And then it'd be people who would just be happy see the patino name affiliated with that program again yeah that would be uh that would be quite the result of that and then uh, uh I'll, I'll get your thought on this before we let you go uh the, the the maybe surprise over the weekend maybe there was a couple depending on what perspective you look at it from um dusty may to uh michigan instead of louisville where it seemed like that was headed that direction and then uh and then d-rock at west virginia like those those are both kind of maybe a little off the board for what we thought was going to happen with those two. Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, I, I, I got the sense that, you know, Dusty Louisville was kind of trending. I saw a picture on Twitter that there were a bunch of chairs set up at the Yum Center, like they were preparing for a press conference. Mm. And then, uh, and then, and then the Michigan notification drops from Woj. And that kind of does make more sense because, you know, Dusty's a low key guy, uh, likes to listen to Rod Wave in his free time, but he's a low-key guy. Um, <laughs> basketball uh, basketball at Michigan will never be, you know, the primary thing, especially coming off a of national championship in football. So he'll, he'll, he'll enjoy laying low for a couple months in Ann Arbor, and, you know, he, I, I think it's a, g- a good addition to the Big Ten. And then, you know, D-Rock to West Virginia, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty damn good hire. That's West a great Virginia. hire. Um, and you get the, the two-for-one of D-Rock and, and Tucker um, heading out to Morgantown, but I mean, Drake has been uh, in, I mean, the record speaks for itself with, with DeVries at Drake. And, you know, they're going to play hard. They're going to play good basketball. Incredible uh, fit. Incredible if, fit. Ab- oh, absolutely. And, you know, I don't know if his personality, I don't know if it's a personality fit, but I think the product on the court, you know, how they're going to play, you know, people out there are going to love it. Yeah. And it's going to, you know, I, I think it's going to be going to be a, a pretty good Pretty good spot for, for D-Rock these next couple of years. Plenty more to come on the uh, on the coaching carousel front. The uh, the journey has just begun. Jacob Bigelow of Huskers Illustrated. Uh, stay tuned to what he's got coming out, I expect. So will there be a pod this week or, or two or seven or however many you did last week? 
<laughs> we did three last week because <laughs> of the circumstances of the quick turnaround from Minneapolis to Memphis and everything in between. And, you know, thanks again to you and, and Amy for hopping on. That was, those were very fun, but um, there will just be one, just be one kind of looking back on the first weekend, previewing the Sweet 16. And you know, I think I'm trying to effort another guest to maybe do a post-mortem of the season at, at large, but uh, we'll have some more of that coming. And then uh, you should be able to find uh, the newest edition of Huskers Illustrated with my Kese Tomonaga Q&A out now. Um, very, or very, very soon. So keep your eyes peeled for that. All right. Uh, appreciate it as always. We'll look forward to it, and we'll talk to you next week. Thanks, Jacob. Yep, appreciate it. Hap. Thanks, man. Jacob Bigelow, Huskers Illustrated. Check that out. He had a good story about uh, his sort of like journey with Nebraska basketball as he was headed down to Memphis. Threw that one out there right prior to game time if you wanted to get a little sappy and emotional. I know there's a lot of people who are real sappy and emotional about Nebraska basketball. I noticed he didn't uh, invite me to do the post-mortem on Nebraska season. Maybe now that you're of TV. Oh, he didn't think I was obtainable. Well, now he might not. Now yeah. you might you might have exceeded that line now. Sure, sure. Unfortunately for you, Josh, uh, we'll still go on your pods if you're interested. Okay. Uh, the the meanwhile in college sports, the dominoes keep falling as uh, the AD roulette continues to spin and spin and spin. University of Washington. Needs they need a new agent. athletic director. They got one. Oh, the uh, athletic director at Washington State. Pat John. I'm sure that'll go over swimmingly with everyone involved. Oh, that's been a bit of a revolving door. Um, that Washington job over the last couple of months. Mm. By the way, Troy Dannon's press conference is coming up in a half hour. That's right. Quick timeout. We'll come back with more on 1620 The Zone. Live from the Host Coffee Studio, this is 1620 The Zone. JTech Construction, the official exterior experts of the Huskers, offers exterior solutions that help you protect your number one investment. Whether it's roofing and siding or windows and doors, they're committed to excellence, quality, and outstanding customer service in every step of the process. When it's time to protect the exterior of your home, your choice is simple. Turn to who the Huskers turn to, JTech Construction. Check them out online and schedule a free estimate today. JTech Construction. The official exterior experts of the Huskers. Wesley Financial Group is not a law firm. Are you a victim of the Tomshire trap and think there's no way out? I'm Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group, the original Tomshire cancellation expert. And I'm here to tell you that there is a way out. We've helped over 30,000 families out of financial hardship by getting them out of bad timeshares. If your timeshare agreement goes on forever, if you were told timeshares are a great investment, or your maintenance fees will never go up, you have questions, we have the answers. At Wesley Financial Group, we're dedicated to helping timeshare owners get out of their financial nightmare. All you need to do is give my office a call. I will send you a timeshare exit information kit absolutely free, explaining how the timeshare industry works and your options for cancellation. Call now for your free timeshare exit information kit. Call 800-761-0000. That's 800-761-0000. 800-761-0000. Get ready for warm weather driving with early spring tire deals at Jensen. Save up to $200 on Goodyear, Cooper, General, Continental, Maxxis, and Kelly tires. Check out Jensen's early spring tire deals at JensenTireAndAuto.com today. College basketball's biggest tournament is coming, and it's time to start betting like a pro with the world's largest sports book right at your fingertips. Circa Sports Iowa is sports betting the way it should be. High betting limits, tight money line splits, exceptional customer service, and more. Fund and bet like a pro anywhere, anytime. It's never been easier. Download your new bookie before all of the March action at CircaSports.com. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call one 800 238 Shop Woodhouse Hyundai during the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event going on right now. With the most versatile lineup of sedans and SUVs, like the Hyundai Elantra or Santa Fe. Plus, your choice of standard engines, plug-in hybrid, or fully electric vehicles. Right now, lease the 2024 Hyundai Kona SE for $199 per month for 24 months and 12,000 miles per year. And when you shop Woodhouse Hyundai, you can rest easy with Hyundai Shopper Assurance. America's best 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain limited warranty. 
Start your deal online at woodhousehyundai.com today. Browse our inventory, personalize your payments, apply for financing, and more. Convenience delivered every time. This is Woodhouse Hyundai. With approved credit, tax title license extra, first payment $3,999 down plus $299 doc fee due at signing. Offer expires April 1st, 2024. See dealer for details. Is your concrete cracked or uneven? Hey everyone, Coach Greg McDermott here to explain why you should choose Everlevel Concrete Repair. Many people think they need to replace broken concrete, but repairing it provides durable protection and comes at a fraction of the cost. Everlevel provides permanent repair solutions to fix your concrete and protect it against future damage. And it all comes with a long-term transferable warranty. They offer free inspections to walk you through the entire process. Call Everlevel Concrete Repair today. Maverick Baseball and Softball are underway, and single-game tickets are on sale now. This Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, the weather is perfect as Maverick Baseball takes on 2023 CWS qualifier Oral Roberts at Tal Anderson Field. Omaha Softball is on a 15-game win streak and plays Creighton on April 2nd, and Maverick Baseball takes on Creighton on April 9th. Don't miss these classic matchups at Maverick Park. Get your tickets now by calling 402-554-MAVS or by going to omavs.com slash ticks. Don't miss this week's zone deal. This week's half off deal is Cops. Receive two $25 gift vouchers for just $25. Cops makes delicious pizza, fresh salads, and tasty charred wings. For the basic menu, click copspizza.com. And for the extended menu, visit them at Shadow Lake Town Center, 180th and Center, and the newly reopened 72nd and Jones locations. Zone deals go fast. 9 a.m. Friday, 1620thezone.com. Velocity Clinical Research in Omaha frequently conducts clinical trials for a broad range of investigational treatments. Typical studies involve medications for high cholesterol, diabetes, infectious diseases, acne, and others. Some current studies include low T, COPD, flu, pediatric, infant, and RSV. They also perform vaccine studies for people of all ages, conducting innovative research that has a positive impact on lives. See current trials at VelocityClinicalTrials.com. Compensation for study-related time and travel. Find out more at VelocityClinicalTrials.com. A DJ spinning songs, cheeseburgers, raffles, and more. Just a random Saturday. Nope. It's the spring open house at Lus Hills Harley Davidson. Come in, join the fun, and swing your leg over a genuine Harley Davidson. I-29 at the Glenwood exit and at LusHillsHD.com. I just saw our guy, uh, Buff Josh, in the uh, bathroom. Okay. Careful. Well, you know, we you know what you talk about with Buff Josh, the Buffs, the Buffs. He's Buff Josh. Buff Josh. He he. They beat Florida. It's a great game right before Nebraska the other night, and uh, then they lost to Marquette in the uh, in the round of thirty two. Nice run, nice little run for Colorado. Absolutely. But this, it's about another guy. This is about Colorado football. It is the off season after all, and. That means Shador Sanders is talking again. Uh, like a salmon to Capistrano. Exactly. Thank you, Josh. So a couple things from uh, from the Sanders crew. Um, first of all, uh, Dion, Papa, he says that uh, they will have very particular, very particular choices on where Shador and Shiloh will go play in the NFL. He says they're going to pull some Eli's. It's going to be an Eli, he says. You definitely want to tell that to people a year in advance. <laughs> and then, Josh, if you want to pull this clip up for me. Oh, okay. I found this, I found this quite amusing, actually. I'm going to have to log back in. I'm sorry. Yeah, why don't you pop that up there real quick um, on, the, uh, on the Google Sheet. So they're gonna they're gonna pull some Eli Mannings and they'll have very specific wants and needs in the teams that they go to, even though I don't know. I don't know what their NFL draft prospects look like, but we always seem to be talking about professional draft prospects with people's sons who are not really viewed all that favorably as draft prospects. Hmm, Shout out to LeBron. All right. Um, but it, are we do we have it, Josh? It is loading. It is loading. Here is Shador Sanders on the adversity that he has overcome in his collegiate career 
and how he is overcame more adversity than specific kinds of high school athletes. Here's oh, Shadour. Okay. I came from a private school, so at the end of the day, I dealt with a lot of negativity, a lot of hate, a lot of everything I done dealt with already year after year. I came from a small private school. Uh, all the other kids was going big, you know, power five, and they went to big 6A, Texas 6A schools and stuff. I don't see those same kids around. I don't see them excelling in their programs or whatever they're doing. So I've always been against the odds. Like in Interesting, Shadur. In interesting. Did he just claim that he doesn't see 6A Texas high school football players do anything? Uh, that that is that's the gist of it. Yeah, interesting yes. claim. I wonder uh, if any of their daddies are football coaches. Somebody did the research on this. Oh, this can't be good. Twenty percent of the first team NFL All Pro team this year oh, came no. from six A Texas high schools. But just the ones he went to school with. How are those guys doing? Those guys doing good. Oh, no. I mean, that was obvious. That, that was obviously going to happen. Trust me, I've overcome a lot of adversity. See, you could have just stopped there. I've overcome a lot of adversity. Mm -hmm. You're lying. I mean, you haven't overcome that much adversity. You're, your dad is one of the most famous football players of all time, yeah. and you would have been the quarterback at whatever school he was coaching. But whatever. That's fine. You you're can just, say that you've overcome adversity. You're just kind of undersized. But don't say that other people haven't overcome adversity. <laughs> That's where, see, this is where we get lost in it a little bit. I'm the best at overcoming adversity. Nobody else is as good as, at me, as me at overcoming adversity. Nah, there's a lot of people who overcome adversity, Shadur. You're not the only person to exist on planet Earth. Under came adversity, I had to go to a private school. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because that, of my that, famous what, father. Whatever, whatever you want to tell yourself, man, that's cool. But don't bring any don't bring the other people into this. Yeah. Don't just live in your own fantasy world and don't and stop comparing yourself to, to other people all the time. Trust me, Shador. You you could it, it will help you in the long run. Jeff writes in on the text line. Hi, Jeff. This guy has no self-awareness. Spoiled rich kid. Yeah. It's, it's part of the charm. It's part of the allure. Uh, mm. Yes, by the way, Nebraska and Colorado will play each other in football again this year. Mm. Many are commenting that Patrick Mahomes went to a Texas 5A school. <laughs> so. Now that's adversity. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, so expect more of this coming uh, throughout the Next few weeks as Colorado goes on their I wonder if their uh, spring game will be televised primetime on ESPN again. Um, we can only hope. Maybe not primetime, but certainly a time. Do you remember that event last year? Vaguely. Oh, I do. It was like snowing in Colorado, and they played touch football, mm -hmm. and they were tiny babies. And they went five and seven, or four and eight. People forget that. People do forget that. They did beat Nebraska. No. We it doesn't matter. Four is four is four. Eight is eight. Yeah, absolutely. Nebraska had more wins. People forget. Um, just imagine if they would have beaten Colorado, then there would have been one less win for them. Maybe a bowl game too. Um, yeah, it would have been that. Uh, one more take for you before we uh, before we get off to our poll questions and we tell you what to watch here tonight. So we do we we go over this every year and it's 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 time to make this clear once again and i know that it favors the big east narrative as a big east homer i know i'm not in the big east burner community like some are but i i'm you know i'm, I'm a fan of the team who's in the big east and who's still alive They're, the big east is undefeated in the ncaa tournament at this point three teams in still have three teams remaining but I'd like to say this, Josh. Maybe, just maybe, individual conference results in the tournament are not necessarily indicative of conference success or, specifically this, how many teams you retrospectively should have gotten into the tournament. We all agreed that Creighton, Marquette, and UConn were different than everybody else the entire year. 
even though Seton Hall was right with them in terms of conference standings, we all knew that the, those three had the chance to really go deep. And not that Seton Hall didn't have a chance to go deep in the NCAA tournament, but it would have been more surprising, right? Those three teams have chances to get to the Final Four. So it's not like there are tiers in the conference. And should the Big East have gotten more teams in? Do they deserve to get more teams in? Yeah, I, I think so. I didn't think Virginia deserved to be in the field. Well, let's just do that. Let's just do one versus one. Let's just compare Seton Hall to Virginia. Let's just compare St. John's to you know Colorado State, and then we'll be good. We don't have to like do the whole conference thing. It's really okay. The Big Ten gets buried in this conversation every year. This is every not year. this is not me being a Big Ten homer. Like there, there's there's nothing about the Big Ten that does or doesn't prepare you. Like whatever, every team plays different different styles, different things. They challenge themselves in different ways out of the non-con. Like we don't need to make the first weekend of the tournament success or lack of success and reapply it in retrospect as a reason that that conference should have had more or less teams in the tournament. You don't have to do that. Creighton sure as hell could have lost on Saturday night. Then is, then should Seton Hall have not got in? <laughs> like, <laughs> You know, no, yeah, yeah. no. So tournament success is just that. Sometimes it takes bounces going the right way. It's just tournament success. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Full questions, we'll tell you what to watch next on 1620 The Zone. Previously on The Crossover. I have mostly sports things that I want nothing to do with muted. Okay. Major League Baseball, muted. <laughs> Baseball, <laughs> muted. I thought you loved the Mets. Uh, I did. Yeah. Mahomes, Chiefs. Harbaugh, Wolverines, Michigan, FIFA World Cup, Goal? Qatar, Goal. World Cup, VAR, USMTRC, World soccer. Cup, Wordle. I got lots on here. Mornings with Sharp and Hanley, the Connor Happer Show on Sportsmanlike Conduct, 6A to 6P, 1620, The Zone. Your Omaha area forecast from the Godfather's Pizza Weather Center and KETV News Watch 7 on 1620, The Zone. Another very chilly Tuesday with temperatures staying in the 30s throughout the day, and we're going to keep the breeze with us as well. Tomorrow, we start our temperatures in the upper teens, low 20s. Eventually, we warm into the 40s with a southeast breeze and partly cloudy skies. I'm meteorologist Luke Vickery, KETV Newswatch 7. The Connor Happer Show returns in minutes on 1620 The Zone. My friends, Kent Pavelka, courtside, getting ready for this year's matchup between the average roofing companies and the rooferees at John Higgins Weather Guard. The average roofers are just that, average at best, not very impressive. The rooferees, above and beyond the opponent, more dependable, service that exceeds the norm, good sportsmanship, fairness, and integrity. You know them, you love them, and they're ready to win for you. Make the right call with John Higgins Weather Guard. It's tip-off time with the rooferees at John Higgins Weather Guard. Make the right call! Trees, are they all the same? Not at Lanaha. Grown from a quality seed source, handcrafted in our local farms for generations, and acclimated to our tough Midwestern climate, Lanaha's trees are different. Simply put, they're better. Much like our trees, we take great pride in being homegrown. Visit our garden center to find your next tree today. Rooted in quality, unmatched value, Lanaha Nurseries. 192nd and Center. You know what mentality can help you with? Low energy, motivation, weight gain, muscle loss, fatigue, tired all the time, feeling anxious, moody, irritability, impatience, anxiety, and depression. Mentality can help you with their board-certified physicians and their testosterone treatments that can take care of you and get you back in the game. You can regain normal function and restore your ability to perform normally at all levels just by mentality. Set up an appointment today. Go to LowTUSA.com. Get back in the game. Don't sit on the sidelines and let mentality lead the way. Do you like to shoot fireworks? Would you like to get paid to shoot fireworks? JM Displays wants you. Help shoot an Omaha Storm Chasers game, Memorial Park Display, or any of the major shows in Western Iowa and all of Nebraska. If you like to travel, JM covers Nebraska, Kansas, and most of Missouri. They offer free training and great daily pay rates, which makes it a perfect part time job. Visit JMDisplays.com and click the Join Our Team tab to find out more. JM Fireworks. 
What goes perfect with the madness of March? The convenience of Cubby's downtown in the old market, 13th and Jackson. And if you're gearing up to watch the game, Cubby's has what you need. You'll find a full meat counter with steaks, burgers, chicken, and homemade brats, hot and fresh deli food, including Chester's Chicken and Godfather's Pizza Express, pop, water, beer, and a full liquor department. See you at Cubby's Old Market, the very best in convenience. Open 24 hours at 13th and Jackson. Email any of our shows anytime into the Equitable Bank inbox. At Equitable, we take banking personally. For me, John at 1620thezone.com. The Equitable Bank inbox from 1620thezone. Woodhouse Buick is bringing you more for the new year. With every new Buick purchase from Woodhouse, we're including three years of scheduled maintenance. Plus, with our current lease offers going on now, you'll save even more. Lease a 2024 Buick Encore GX for $297 a month for 39 months, 10,000 miles per year. With approved credit, must finance with GM Financial. Must currently lease a 2019 or newer GM vehicle to qualify. $2,795 down payment and first payment plus $299 dock fee due at sign-in. Offer expires April 1st, 2024. See dealer for details. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash sports. Ramp.com slash sports. R-A-M-P dot com slash sports. Currents issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. Uh, by the way, earlier we were talking about the symbolic nature of where your press conference takes place when you're introduced yeah, at the University of Nebraska. Right. Troy Danins will be on the fourth floor, the same place as Scott Frost and uh, Fred Hoiberg and Trev, I think, too. Yeah. Okay. I can't say that really any of those worked out. Not much has, Josh. Okay. It's been tough. Matt Rules, kind of good. I, I, w- I would say he's pretty good, maybe he, even very good. He did not have a fourth floor, fourth floor press conference. Correct. Interesting. Uh, poll questions at Happer Show. Josh has claimed, quote, I got to start pumping these suckers out. A little low. The numbers are low. These are rookie numbers. It's on me. I got to be I, I got to be funnier. Well, we've been there's been so much sports. To right talk now, we've about. been very sports. We haven't been able to really go to those weird places that the poll questions crave. Uh, flashback to the crossover from yesterday is a Nissan a Lib truck. A lot of people had a lot of opinions on this. I vote yes. Um, yeah, I think so. Currently, with only 34 minutes left to vote, only 52% are saying yes. Oh, your vote counts. Pretty tight split. Mm-hmm. Um, and today's poll question was, if there is pool, do you swim? Yeah, most of the time. 54% also say yes. I agree for the record. Okay, that one's close too. Uh, those are the poll questions, Josh. What are we watching in there? Uh, we are watching some basketball on our televisions tonight. It comes to us courtesy of the NIT quarterfinals. That's oh, right. Tell me who's playing in the NIT, Josh. Georgia, Ohio State, ESPN, 6 o'clock. And after that, Cincinnati versus Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in Indiana State. There you go. At 8 o'clock on ESPN. Now, ESPN 2 also has a doubleheader. This is the CBI semifinals. Oh, okay. Would you like to know who's playing in that? I would. High Point versus Arkansas State. Oh, Al Huss. And then in the other half of the bracket, Seattle versus Fairfield. Very good. Okay. Uh, four games slate in the NBA tonight. Two of those on TNT. Lakers, Bucks, 630. 
followed by Mavericks Kings at 9 o'clock. Hulu has hockey at 6.30 tonight. The Toronto Maple Leafs host the New Jersey Devils. And finally on Peacock, a documentary about the craft of comedy called Good One, colon, a show about jokes. The documentary offers an immersive look at the craft of comedy by following comedian Mike Birbiglia as he develops new material. It features Seth Meyers, Hassan Minaj, and more. It might be interesting to find how Hassan Minaj crafts a joke. Yeah. Since according to certain news outlets, it's all BS. I don't I don't know what you're referencing. Well, a lot of his stand-up is completely fake, which is apparently not okay to do. It's not okay I, to do. I isn't it just are all of these just ideas yeah. that are funny? It doesn't have to be something that happened to you, isn't right? Isn't being funny just funny? Like, right? That's not enough for you. It has to be real. Okay. Give me a break. I'm glad I'm glad we agree. We do. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Connor. That's what we're watching tonight, and that is the show. If you missed anything, you can find it over at 1620thezone.com. I'll be out tomorrow. Shriner will be in for me, mm -hmm. but I will be hosting Unsportsmanlike Conduct from Vegas with Josh. So we'll have that tomorrow. And okay, then so uh, you're Josh. You do and someone I, else's show, but not your own show tomorrow. That is correct. Got I will be of okay. plane tomorrow. Okay. I mean, do it from the plane. Impossible. Impossible. Have you heard the Wi Fi on the plane? <laughs> I heard they have it. It's nope, not really. <laughs> you could pay eight bucks. It ain't going to make it better. Nah, okay. Uh, Might so, have Nikki Lopez on the show tomorrow. Oh, very good. So we'll talk to you from, uh, we'll, I'll talk to you from Vegas uh, tomorrow evening. And uh, Josh might talk to Nikki Lopez with Shredder. Josh, you're just putting out bangers while I'm gone. I appreciate Nothing it. Nothing but illustrious guests. All right, uh, we're done for today. We will talk to you tomorrow. Crossover's next. Live from the Host Coffee Studio. This is 1620 The Zone. The world's largest sports book in Las Vegas is available right at your fingertips in Iowa. The Circus Sports Iowa app is sports betting the way it should be. Bet anywhere in Iowa and experience high betting limits, tight money line splits, and exceptional customer service. Download your new bookie today. Visit CircusSports.com and start betting like a pro from anywhere in Iowa. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-238-7633. Shop Woodhouse Hyundai during the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event going on right now. With the most versatile lineup of sedans and SUVs, like the Hyundai Elantra or Santa Fe. Plus, your choice of standard engines, plug-in hybrid, or fully electric vehicles. Right now, lease the 2024 Hyundai Kona SE for $199 per month for 24 months and 12,000 miles per year. And when you shop Woodhouse Hyundai, you can rest easy with Hyundai Shopper Assurance, America's best 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain limited warranty. Start your deal online at woodhousehyundai.com today. Browse our inventory, personalize your payments, apply for financing, and more. Convenience delivered every time. This is Woodhouse Hyundai. With approved credit, tax title license extra, first payment $3,999 down plus $299 doc fee due at signing. Offer expires April 1st, 2024. See dealer for details. What goes perfect with the madness of March? The convenience of Cubby's downtown in the old market, 13th and Jackson. And if you're gearing up to watch the game, Cubby's has what you need. You'll find a full meat counter with steaks, burgers, chicken, and homemade brats. Hot and fresh deli food, including Chester's Chicken and Godfather's Pizza Express. Pop, water, beer, and a full liquor department. See you at Cubby's Old Market, the very best in convenience. Open 24 hours at 13th and Jackson. Sometimes life throws you a curveball and you need a solution fast. A solution to help you make payroll, to save your house, to keep growing, or fund a startup, to fix a roof or other major repair. Sols is your fast, local, confidential solution. Get the cash you need today with Sols. It's the most time-honored tradition to start the weekend. Grabbing a cold one from a local Nebraska brewery. Let's be real here. It's cold outside, and you don't want to drink the same boring beer as those Hawkeye fans. Drink Nebraska brewed beer, cider, or seltzers instead. Each week, we're putting the spotlight on a unique Nebraska brewery with One Beer Friday. Share your brew on social media with the hashtag One Beer Friday, and you'll be entered to win a $25 gift card to a local Nebraska brewery. Nebraska is the good life with great beer. Click Nebraska.beer to learn more. Welcome to this episode of... 
RV Ready, brought to you by Leach Camper Sales in Council Bluffs. Looks like the open road is calling. Call me Rudy. Time's a wasting people. Mountains, lakes, rivers, campsites, all of it is waiting for you. I'm hearing you. Leach Camper Sales has the RV for you, and I am calling you out here. Sounds like people should head to leachcamper.com and check out the inventory, or just stop by Leach Camper Sales in Council Bluffs. And don't forget, the coffee's always on. Of course it is. He thinks B 